Well, an absolutely beaut from the sea. Not that absolute monster we wanted, but nevertheless, an absolute lovely fish. Good sport and uh, over the rough ground, really get a good, good account for itself. Bullets can be a fantastic species to catch and uh, as you'll find out in this adventure. Okay folks, welcome. It's a revenge mission today. So myself and Joseph have come back down to Start Point and uh, water clarity is nearly what I want it to be. It's not absolutely perfect, but uh, we wanted to get out for the day and uh, we're down here giving it a go. The only downfall is seals. We've, all, we've already got three seals here. So it's one of them at the end of the day. You just got to try your luck, haven't you? But the main focus of the day, we've got the net there, is bullus. We're after a double figure bullus. You've got a chance of spotties, but uh, bullus is the main sort of target today. Lovely. Let's get set up. So, tackle wise, the equipment, because of what we're doing today, I would have liked to prefer to have brought my 435s. Uh, unfortunately, I took the real seats off because I'm redoing the shrink tube on them. And uh, it was a last minute decision to get out today. So I've got the T9s. I'm using rotten bottom equipment today, obviously a different type of fishing. We're focusing more on the, on the cleaner sort of side than the last session for the place. Coloration of the water today and with the seals, it's not looking fantastic, but it's a case of getting out. 
We're supposed to be sheltered from the wind at the moment, but because it's so strong in the 40s, believe it or not, we're fishing in 43 mile an hour southwesterly go, uh, gusts going to um, south southwesterly. So the more it goes swings around southerly, it, um, it should be coming more along that sort of side. At the moment, because of the way it's coming, it's sort of like bounding back off the headland and hitting us still. But compared to what it was like up the top, we're, we're sort of comfortable. So let's get set up now. In case of getting out there and giving it a go, really. I mean, uh, I haven't been able to get out the cat past couple of weeks. Work's been absolutely manic. And I mean, absolutely manic. It's uh, the rain. It's just putting a downer on everybody. I think uh, I think everybody's fed up with it. If I'm if I'm honest, I think everybody's like walking around looking very miserable in the supermarkets and at work and stuff. And I think I think it's just down to the rain. I mean, we just it's just not needed, is it? Hopefully, though, with the amount of rain we've had, we're in for a good summer because the other year it sort of like done the same thing, didn't it? It gave us a load of wet weather going into like February and March, and then we had uh, we had a little bit of uh, we. Joseph stuff's come out of his bag there, which you don't want. We'll put the bags in so we don't, nothing, nothing blows away. I'm just going to set up one rod for the minute. And then we'll set something up later on. But a lot of people fish up fish differently where I am. Because it's mixed ground and you've got the chance of rays at the same time, I normally fish 20 pound mainline. Now a lot of people who are fishing for hus won't do that. Having said that, I've, I'm not a big fuss ha uh, hus angler. Over the years, um, I've had some decent husks, but not something that I've gone out and specifically targeted that many times. But the ones I have gone out and uh, had the better fish have always been ray fishing, believe it or not. So uh, I've had some really good husks down where I am in, over the 14 pound mark. And uh, it can fish really well down here in these conditions. Having said that, the water's not absolutely perfect as well as it, I'd like it. I like it a little bit more coloured than it is. And I thought with the weather we've had over the last couple of days, we would see that. But uh, being the big spring tide as well, I think it sort of had effect on it as well. But it is the water clarity, clarity is uh, is pretty good. Need to get me words out. We'll go through the rigs. Let's be rig wallet. So rig wallet. Joys of having this rig wallet out now. So as you can see there, come a bit closer. Okay. So I've got a mixture of drop down rigs, running ledgers, pulley rigs, and today I'm going to use a drop down rig. Okay. On the first one, and I'll probably put pulley rigs on the next ones. Um, and I'll go through why in a minute. I haven't got a trace on that. Do you know what? I'm not going to. I'm going to go for, I think. A pulley. Running up and over. Just to try it for the first one. I might swap that to a pulley if I'm honest. But I want a long flowing trace. So that's, that's a decent flowing trace that. I can put a rotten bottom on that as well which is definitely going to be needed today and uh, away we go so I have a mixture of hooks okay because of the type of fishing I'm doing today I'm going to use slightly bigger hooks okay so I've got the Mustad 4.0 ultra points big guns and I've also got some Chinoos and I've got the six six old big guns, okay? So I am gonna fish the big guns today on this rig, followed by a octopus hook on the top, just to uh, do the business. And then I can basically fish it like so, come up the trace line like that. I find the long flowing traces work better, guys, if I'm honest. Especially for the hus down here. I mean, a lot of people go further out onto the, the rougher ground, but I find that when the water's dirty, like it is, it can fish really well in here. And the good thing about it, at the same time, then, is um, you get some really good sport on it as well. I find 40 pound line 
straight through sometimes is um, a little bit overkill. We, I mean, this this uh, this wind is uh, is very strong. Hopefully, you don't pick it up on the sound. But uh, as I said, it's 40 mile an hour, so we will get some big gusts coming through. Gonna set up with my um, scissors now. Okay. Have you got that line there, Joe? So that's the hooks on. Snip the, uh, the bottom one off. And away we go. So I've got an old big box of um, F1 line from Ultima and I've just kept this because it, it's rather old and it's just something that's been sat there. I use it for my rotten bottoms. So what I tend to do now on this, lazy really, I, I wanted a drop down because a drop down will give you perfect connection straight away to the, to the fish because it's straight away when it's on its bite, it's in its mouth and as you hit in with this, obviously it's got to run first. But um, it is what it is. So what I, I tend to do is put the Gemini rotten bottom link clip, like so. And then, I get the trace line, like that. And what I do is I just tie that to the bottom here, like so. Very important, guys, when you're fishing rough ground for like, out, you're going out and out rough ground in, is to use a bottom, rotten bottom lip rig. Because the last thing you want to do is get a decent fish on and lose it. You will get your gear back. I found in the past, but last time we were down here, I think people have been fishing it wrong and it's created an artificial reef out there full of slags. I'm hoping the tides pushed it away. Now, it's been a few years I've put a lot of time in down here. But to be honest, I've only come down here really for Joseph because uh, it's, a, it's a good place to get a big huss out for him. You don't get a lot of huss up where he lives. And um, obviously down here now, while he's down here sort of uh, on holiday, it's, uh, it'd be nice to get out and uh, see him a few fish out, fingers crossed. And you've got a chance of getting into a real stomping bullet down here. Okay, so, <coughs> weights. So this is from Seacast Leads. And uh, what I tend to do is, I don't get fussy with it really, I just pull them back with my hands. A lot of people use, you, will use um, pliers. They're seven ounce leads. Like so, and that's it. I don't even clip them in like that because it's only gonna go in the rough ground. And uh, if anything, hopefully with this rig now, I've tied three loop, knots in the trace line above we are tying the rig the reason I've got a, I've got a weak link in the line then like so bring that down through and there you go and there it is boys and girls perfect set up so that'll come down on my on my rig like that now I'll loop that around like so, so it, it basically causes a loop there. And then that will clip down like that. And then what I tend to do is put that, so the trace lines underneath the lead. So as it comes down through, it don't get in the way of the uh, imp being attached down to the top of the bait then. Everybody's gonna have their own ways of doing it, guys. And some of you, some of, I'm not trying to teach every, anybody to suck eggs because half of you know what I'm doing. And um, it's more so for the guys which just starting out and um, they want a few hints and tips of catching a few fish and rigs. And I mean, I remember when I first started out, one of the hardest things was, is learning it all. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, just, a, it's just something you pick up over time. And um, yeah, it's, we've all got to start somewhere. So that's the rig basically, guys. So I'm gonna clip that on now. like so okay so that's all clipped up and then I've got a long flowing trace ready to pick a bullet up fingers crossed I might shorten that tra trace a little bit because these are actually made up for <laughs> my blonde rigs <laughs> but um, I might take what should I take I'll take about that much off it yeah I've quite shortened that quite a lot there now Because with the mixed ground there, I don't want to give it a chance to run too far before it sort of picks up. And the other thing is, normally 
I'd set my drag. I wouldn't set my drag too much because because I'm fishing smaller baits. A lot of people make this mistake, I think, with with Elin and um, with Bullison really, because if you've got a massive, massive bait, your fish tend to mouth the bait too, uh, more. But a big fish will pick up a smaller size bait. So you're better with a medium size size bait and smaller hooks. Like these are six holes now. These are land big eels. They land anything you want it with it really. They just got to be proud so the hook picks up the eel and. Uh, yeah all the huss and that's all i tend to use especially for this sort of thing and i've got a chance of obviously picking the rays up at the same time then so uh rubbish line sat in there let's get baited up so i've got the cool box with me find it's ideal to keep it in the car because if we got down here and it wasn't perfect conditions we could uh play around so i've got some sand deal there i've got some squid and i've got some pilchards as well so um yeah we'll get some on now and uh away we go so i'm going to start with a sand deal bait i think Okay, these from Matt's. Perfect large sand deals. And uh, I am just going to cut the head off, cut the tail, like so. I'm probably going to leave that one in there actually. I'm going to go with a bit of squid. So I've got a bit of a uh, hooker squid there. What I tend to do now is cut straight up through the squid, like that. I'm going to back it up, back the back of the sand deal up here now with this squid. And then uh, get my bait elastic. A lot of people do this differently because I'm backing it up with squid. It don't matter where the trace line comes out. So basically all I'm doing is going through the back of the eel like so, right, with this hook. So I'm, I'm, all I'm going to do is bring it in make sure it's got a good point and I'm going to bring it out the bottom like that all right so that hook point is way out of the back and then what I can do is I'm going to use this squid inside out for scent so I'm going to put that over the hook again at the bottom on the bottom I'm going to put it like so all right and then I've got that over the hook point so what I can do then is get the uh, bait elastic like so the main thing guys is having that hook point proud it's not always about the size of the hooks it's making sure that hook point is proud out of the bait because you don't want it too far out but you don't want it tucked into the bait so that it smothers the the hook because uh you're smothering the bite then and nine times out of ten if it you haven't got that hook so especially with bullets and stuff like that they've got quite big mouths and uh and where you go so what i'm going to tend, tend to do now is I'm going to back that back up over itself now. I don't want no dangly bits. I want that that potential first bite to be the hook. Um, so as it comes off and away it goes half the time, especially with this rig, it won't even know it's hooked until it goes to take off and it fills up bang straight over. And as I said, I do prefer to use running um, a pulley drop down here because it's instant bite detection. A lot of people don't like the rig, but I'm a big fan, especially for this type of fishing really. Um, the bite indication on him are, are very good. I find if it's set up correctly, obviously you pull back in when it wants to set the hook, to set the rig up, um, and away you go. So I, I tend to fish a top panel hook, and what I tend to do now is pull that in tight, and I have it on the opposite side of the first hook, okay, and away it goes. There's loads of juices coming straight out of that now. Do you need a rotten bottom clip? Got one. Got one? You got a proper one? No, I just used to Alright. Right. To be fair, that's uh that's looking pretty good there though. So guys, that's that's basically everything set up then. Put the eel back in. Wrap him a straight around like so. Send that cool bag straight over to Joseph now and uh, we can get one out into the water that's what bait now guys eels dogfish rays um, bullets uh, you, mackerel anything will come along and take that wrath it's a hook point both sides of the bait and uh, especially for the bullets what we are targeting at the moment if, uh, if that comes along picks it up, that's got good bite and it's got a good firm hooks out both sides of the bait. So the chance of, as it picks the bait up and it goes to take off with a rig, 
that hook's going to go, go straight away. I mean, my drag I'll set quite tight, enough to take some lime to get the bite indication and then get straight onto it. But I'm going to fish one rod here at the minute and then hopefully uh, we'll see how we get on. If we, get, if we don't get too much trouble here, as I said, I haven't fished here for many years. I've got a feeling people have been fishing it wrong and caught like an artificial reef, especially out to the right hand side where I was fishing last time because I used to fish here and not lose a lead. And uh, last time I was fishing with bum leads, no wind and that, so we were getting ultimate distance out there and uh, we're still getting snagged up where that was a lot of the cleaner ground. So um, it's one of them, isn't it? So yeah, we'll get this one out on. So I don't know if you can pick that wind up, guys, but it's getting quite strong. It's going to try and put away a lot of the gear so it doesn't blow away, really. It's got my hooks and stuff like that put back in. Got the line. Got my waterproofs down there. I'll put that in on top. I think Joseph might need that now. Do you need that? Okay, chuck that over to you. And uh, yeah, see if we can get one out. So, that's hooked up onto the uh, rock bottom there, onto the imp, and then I'm just re-putting this uh, rotten bottom on. It's, it's coming off quite easy enough. I like to set it up the top when I'm setting these ones here, so I know they're going to come off straight away. We're going to wind one up now. It's brand new line on it, so I'm hoping I can get away. I'm turning the mag down a little bit for first cast. Got a lot of side wind coming through, so I was going to try and ping him out to the left slightly and then he's going to bring around naturally with the tide i think but uh let's set, see if we can get one out That one very good. Huh? It did, yeah. Just hoping that bait's gonna settle now, because it uh it come unclipped in the air. That's tension straight up straight away there as well. So uh just have to watch that for a minute. I'm setting my drag, not completely tight. I want it to allow the fish to take slightly. Because the thing with this rig, it'll lose the rotten bottom now. Get a bite straight away. And a bite straight away then. The reason we've come down here over low water because for some reason, especially when it's rough out on those outer scale marks around Matscombe and places like that, and that this bay sort of like gets coloured up, but the fish can come in and get out of it. And that's why the, the seals tend to spend a lot of time around here as well. I mean, years and years ago when we used to fish down here, you wouldn't see the seals that often compared to you do now. Every time I've come down here recently, there's seals here. So um, I'm definitely getting bites straight away, guys. Two proper nice little knocks then. Yep, here we go. Let's see if we can get one out. It'd be nice if we can get one straight away out on camera, wouldn't it? You know, get that side wind, it's pot, pot, pit, fit, um, having to put up with it because you're out fishing in 40 mile an hour winds. But uh, if you look out to the right hand side there now, when I pan the camera around in a minute, it's um, you've got white horses throughout, further out, and it's like a headland basically protecting us from the, um, from the wind. So obviously B, C, uh, B sands in the back wouldn't be very nice now. No anglers along there. Horse sands in on the left hand side. No anglers in there. And uh, the reason being the wind would be blowing straight in at you.
a couple of really nice like banging bites then it's not gone yet that's why i like the, the drop down rig because when you're using a drop i might have to set one up in a minute to be honest it was in a rush as i said work's been an absolute nightmare at the moment especially with the rain and stuff and it's um we're a little bit behind we're working outside building and uh, unfortunately it, uh, it's having a chance and every chance i've had to come out it's been raining and uh, we looked at the forecast today and i thought you know what we've got a good good chance of maybe hitting into a few fish and if that rain holds off as well it could be worth uh, worth getting out and doing a little video for you guys at the end of the day but i like to do more and more of it if i'm honest but at the same time you've got to work for a living the same as everybody um bills to pay and stuff but uh, all the all the um support through the youtube channel it does does help guys so if you're watching this type of video for the first time and you're enjoying the content and stuff please put a thumbs up and and subscribe because it does help support the channel and that enables us to get out more frequently and uh, put more videos together We couldn't leave it on the last one. It's, this is the revenge mission. <laughs> Joseph done the done the done the good la last time here. Hopefully, between the fish baits today, we can see a few fish out. I'm just hoping we can get the gear back as well, if I'm honest. So Joseph's fishing a pulley rig, and. Uh, as you can see, it's Sammy down there going the rock guy. See him? He's just climbing out onto the rock guy down there now. Which is, uh, he's looking up to say hello. I don't know if you can pick him out right down there in the seaweed there. There he is. He's coming out now. Look at that. It's nice to see. So, uh, as you can see, the uh, white horse is out in the back. How rough it is going around to the front to start. Sort of like planned our uh, trip. To the weather, I mean, uh, I know there's a lot of anglers who weren't getting out this weekend because of the forecast, but what I find, there's always ways of getting out of it, especially with a little bit of knowledge of the areas and stuff. You can look at it on Google as well, guys. It's not necessarily stuff which you've got to pick up over years. I mean, you sort of like pick up when you're at a venue and stuff, what, what fish is better and stuff like that in rougher conditions. Um, and, and it's the same as down here, really. I mean, I find start fish is better rough. Um, straight out there for Joseph, a nice little cast. Let's put it out right, right where it wants to be. And uh, yeah, I've, I've just found a little bit of coloured water. I mean, the water's not fantastically coloured, like chocolate, where I'd like it. But at the same time, it's um, it's got a tint to it. So you've always got a chance. There's Sammy down there again, swimming past, saying hello. Let's see if we can go and say hello to him, shall we? If not anything, guys, there he is. You right, Sammy? There he is. Oh! He's talking to me there. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know if that was a hello or that was a go away, please. You don't look very happy with me. You don't look very happy with me. Amazing sight to see though, isn't it? Seal watching at start point. Where's he going to come up to now? There he is, down the bottom there now. Let's go see if we can get a bit of a closer look to him. I don't know if you can hit pick that up. He's sort of snorting at me. I wonder if it'll have effect on the fishing today. I wonder if it'll have effect on the fishing. Is he going to come back up? He's not come back up again now, is he? There he is, he's over there now. See when we can get down a bit closer, say hello. There he is. Oh, Sammy.
We leave him to it now. So guys, here we are. It's a lovely Sunday morning. And believe it or not, we've been, been to work already. So me and Joseph was up at half past six this morning and I travelled to Plymouth and unfortunately it's raining down there. So sort of come back up and thought, you know what, we've got to get out. And uh, yeah, it's... Um, Joseph's down there talking to Sammy. Yeah, it's, it's nice to get out. I find once a week at least I need fishing and it's good for your mental health especially. I don't know if it's a factor, the fact of like getting out there and, out and catching a few fish or it's the fact of just getting out there and not thinking about anything else in life because uh, it's challenging at times, especially as you get older now. The only thing you seem to be doing, especially when you're younger as well, really, I mean, you start getting your own bills, you move out of home, you get your own bills, and uh, you're creating your own life as you go through, isn't you? And at the same time, you've, it's, just, it's just always pressure. And um, it's just nice to get away from all the pressures of life sometimes. And I think that's why a lot of people do like enjoy fish fishing. I mean, I was speaking to someone the other day regarding, um, he was a carp fisherman for the best part of 30 years and uh, he's been watching the videos and stuff that we've been doing and uh, it's got him out sea fishing so he's went and bought a set up and that and he's going out fishing now and uh, he said it's lovely to see the different sort of like um, views and areas and that he's been traveling around to so he, i think he's based up near dorset and because he was saying to me that he was um, fishing the uh, perbex a bit and uh, he's asking me up marks to be honest i don't fish up that way very often so i'm not it's not not something I'm, I'm very knowledgeable in but i did say to him it's worth putting a message on the facebook group because someone around that area would probably be willing to help him out and stuff and i think that's the hardest thing at the end of the day guys especially for like if you if you're caught fishing or you're like that sort of fishing really you're going into a pond where the fish are already it where it are so you've got a really good chance of catching here and there haven't you where sea fishing is a lot more time consuming of catching i believe because if you can't catch what's not in front of you and um it's in i really believe it's a lot to do with knowledge it really is because um you sort of like over the years of fishing you seem to find where fish is and what fish is and what what tides fish best and stuff like that now um we've been having a chat on a phone call the other day with a with a company who's created an app and uh, basically the app is going to, they were trying to turn it into like a fishing diary for a sea angler. So I think the, the startup of it, from what they're talking about, is free to download. And you can store all your information and stuff like that on there, just for you to, to, to have and, and create like a diary of. Um, and you can basically pin yourself to, say here, for example, today, and it would log the tides, it would log the weather and all stuff like that. You'd put your own like personal in, in uh, touches to it to say, I caught, a, I caught a dogfish or I caught a bullet or I caught a big ray or whatever else like that and it sort of stores that information so when you went to go out over time and you think where shall i go today you could basically push where to fish and it would go back over your cut over your information that you've the data you put into it over time and it would show you where it's worth going to from your you know what i mean and a lot of it's in there i know from a lot of anglers but to have that information stored on an app to me would be phenomenal you know what i mean and um, there is ways i think they're sort of like looking at doing a subscription charge where you can share and pick up like catch reports and stuff like that i mean Social media is a really good thing, a really powerful thing, I believe. But at the same time, in a way, I, I feel that sometimes it can it can be its own worst enemy because uh, there's a lot of people out there which go, won't share catch reports and that now because people put in like comments on. I mean, there was a bass uh, uh, caught on a really nice bass caught, and we put a picture up of it. And uh, it was a shame to see a lot of people because at the end of the day, guys, if, uh, you go out nine times out of ten someone would forget a, a, a fish uh, a weighing scale uh, a weighing sling or they'd forget their scales and stuff like that sometimes you've got to estimate for me i keep them in my bag all the time but there is times where you would forget something you know what i mean and if you catch a fish what do you do everybody wants to weigh it and everybody wants a picture and stuff and um it's making the best i know there's fish handling and stuff like that but i feel that sometimes people get like just mullered on there for for things and it, half the time it's not even i know there was a picture of a bass being weighed and stuff like that and I, know, I know if you weigh you get a bass up but through the front I fit personally I think it's a wrong way of weighing the fish but if you did have to weigh it like that it's um you can you could weigh the fish like that and then put it back down and, and take time and it would go back if you start damaging gills and stuff like that I think yeah you, you need to especially like the way like smooth round and bullets and stuff like that you've got to weigh them weigh them properly it's like the weighing today um I forgot my weigh sling so we got a carrier bag we're gonna have to try and weigh it in a carrier bag today if we get one but um 
silly things. It's, it's just, it's all part of life. But I feel that sometimes people are quick to jump on the bandwagon on social media and stuff. And um, people get put off by doing, putting things on there where the app sort of would, would, would stop that because you could put what you want and you wouldn't have to have the feeling of, oh, someone, I'm not going to put that because I might get negative comments coming back because there wouldn't be that sort of form of approach to put comments back on it. You know what I mean? So it'd make it a lot safer, a lot safer really for, for people sharing catch reports and stuff. It's, um, it really amazes me sometimes, to be honest. But uh, we ain't had nothing come back from that bite yet. We've been sat down, how long we reckon we here? 10 minutes or more? Yeah. It's probably been in 10 minutes. We've sat down, we've seen Sammy for five minutes. And uh, yeah, soon tell on that first rig. I don't think it unclipped properly, so it might be something I'll have to look at in a minute. Might have to shorten the, um, the rig body down to match the trace line, I think. But uh, really, I should have, as I said, we, it was a last minute decision. We sort of like chucked all the gear in. I forgot my, my uh, main trace line. I've got some shock leader there if I've got to make some up. But Yeah. Specimen awards is going really well. Sammy's back. Seems to like us. In a ham field of seal for you all. Is he? He's angry, I reckon. Yeah, he's shouting at me, isn't it? He's shouting at me as well. But... He might be a bit more friendly if we give him something to eat. I normally am. You feed me, I'm fine. <laughs> right, so, I've got a pilchard here. <laughs> They're talking to him like a dog. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can get him feeding. Where are you two? Huh? Can't see him now, can you? No? Here you go. <laughs> Here you go. Is he? Come over here. Come on. Come on. There he is. Come on. Sammy. Didn't even get it, did he? Well, I'm not chucking in no more. Back to fishing. Okay, guys. So, another thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to try and take one off. And I feel it's a big, important part of fishing. And I think a lot of people tend to make the mistakes in videos and stuff like that when they're doing stuff, which they should be giving it the correct information. Because at the end of the day, a lot of the videos we do, I've always tried to express the dangerous sides of it because things like where you come to now is you need a bit of fitness so going up and down the cliff and you also need the right correct 
gear when you're on the rocks. I mean, these rocks, when they're wet, can be very dangerous. So I wear studded boots. Some these I don't like the big boots like Joseph's got for on the rocks. Don't mind them on the beach and stuff, or on the on the channel and stuff like that. But I find I prefer these because it's less sweaty and stuff. But um, these these are now I've still got stud in them. I'm going to renew the studs on these. But uh, they're they're fantastic really. Um, they're grubs and they got a perfect sole and that on them. Really good book, boot, boot. I've had them for a few years now and they're in the same condition. And I will try to look after my gear a little bit if I can. So he's having to buy it all the time, doesn't it? But um, they're, they're not cheap, cheap. But at the same time, they, um, as you can see here, I'm saying I'm looking after them. I've just noticed I'm going to have to renew these. Look, I've got a big split on the top of them. It don't really affect the general walking and on the, when I'm on the rocks and stuff, but if I get wet or going through a, in a puddle or something like that, I'm going to get soaked feet. So it's something I've had to, I'm probably going to have to renew. But um, yeah, as I said, I've, I've, they've, they've probably, I've had them probably five years now. I probably paid, I don't know, 100 and, 120 quid for them, I think, something like that. And probably one of the best 120 quid I've ever spent on fishing gear, if I'm honest, because they, uh, they've been, a, been an absolute blessing to me. But uh, the grubs, you can do them differently now. Um, there is, um, there's places which actually sell them studded and stuff like that, or you can get the boots and stud them yourself. Uh, that's what I, I would recommend if you can't get hold of them. I've got a bite here now. Some in there. So I've been playing around. Bottom bomb gone. No fish though. Felt that rotten bottom go straight away guys. And that's exactly what you want when you're uh, fishing this type of ground. As I said before, if you haven't got that rotten bottom, look how easy that went there though, 20 pounds. That's losing the lead. But the worst thing you want to do, and that the trouble is this bit here is going to be a bit more tricky now, is the, because uh, there's no tension, I've got to let the lead come around this island to the right hand side of me. So it's coming around. That's it. So, completely stripped. Got, got a fish on? No. Joseph even got his uh, lead back. But as you can see here, I've been completely stripped. So, could be a couple of things. Could be crabs. Could be smaller fish. Wrasse, etc. But completely and utterly smashed so uh, what I normally do is feel the line there's a lot of like bright I think it's crabs Welcome. yeah I can feel a little bit normally you can feel it around the line and I can feel a little bit there but I've got 100 pounds um, rig bodies on that there I thought they were 80 they are hundreds these are what I use tend to use for blondes so we're getting another rig set up now and uh, hopefully I've got 10 leads with me hopefully I don't lose them in 10 casts So, I'm going to do my bait first, and I'll do my lead. So, I'm tempted not to get another reel out. <laughs> I'll need that, that, and I'll need another lead. I'll need some bait as well, won't I? That would help. So, I think I'm going to fish one of these pilchards. I 
Yeah, I am. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fish it a little bit differently because that's quite a big bait. Okay, so I'm going to actually cut it. Do you want half a pilchard? Get it on. So reason I've put, put half of a, a pilchard on here at the minute is I'm gonna back it up with squid. Alright, but I'm actually gonna do a smaller I don't know, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna leave it like that. Uh, sort of like goes all the way through like that. The good thing about that now, what I can do is I can add the squid. So, did you have that ever? Oh, no, I've got it, I know. I'll just put a whole squid on the back of that now. There's me telling you small baits. <laughs> Squid and pilchard. Like so. Okay. Bring the lead down. Uh, top hook, pen hook now. Like so. So I've got a hook at the top, hook at the bottom. Hopefully. That'll be what I wanted. So the also the other thing I've got to do here now, I'll bring it bring a rod around so I can show you. Put the rod down like that so it don't get scratched. I did forget bait and towel, which is a nightmare. You got a towel? Oh guys. What do you do without a bait and towel? It's gonna to have to be a case of a jumper. <laughs> oh, Joseph's that. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think yeah, we could all, we could do, what two jumpers or a hat. Oh yeah. He said if I'm gonna be a warm about it, he's willing to let us use his jumper as a bait and towel. I think bait and towel is definitely needed. <laughs> If he's taking a jumper off, I, I, to be honest, it's way too many jumpers on a nice hot day like today. It's not that, it's just, it would, at the end of the day, you've got a bit of packed lunch and that. The last thing you want to be doing is having baity, baity, no, I don't like squid flavoured sausage rolls, mate. It's not just that, it's like horrible stuff on your hands when you're trying to cast. I do sound a bit like a woman, don't I? There you go. Gotta be clean and tidy. Right. This is a nightmare. Okay, so lead on there again, like so. Bottom, bottom on the top. So that's set up. All right, rig body in there like that. Now, if I put that there like so, I can just basically show you what I'm doing here with. So I've got a running up and over, as I said, guys, for those of you who don't know, it's a rig body, allows the lead to move, and then uh, you've got the tension there. It's a bit like a running ledger, really, but a, a boat, boat sort of size version. And then uh, away you go. So, yeah, let's get this one out there. As I said, I'm not, I'm not, my reels were running quite quick, so I've kept the brakes down on them. So all I'm gonna do now 
to try and get one out there. Lovely. We've got so much side wind, it's phenomenal. <laughs> you like that, don't you? <laughs> I'm going to get a comment about that, and I. Those of you who know, they know. <laughs> Just a waiting game once again. But uh, it's a nice day for it. Wind's sort of like settling down as it comes to tea time now. So I think about six o'clock, it sort of like goes from 40 mile an hour to 20. The, as, as lower it gets, I mean, in 20 mile an hour here, you get the odd little bit of breeze coming through like it is now, but you won't get those big smashing gusts. What seems is coming, coming over the top of the headland and just sinking right down on us. But um, right out onto the main point to start, you wouldn't want to be anywhere to the right now, going along towards Matscombe. It would just be, the sea would be very rough, it would fish. But it can be very dangerous down there, guys. So one thing I would recommend for anybody local what's fishing sort of start for the first time, there's certain things you need to do and, and listen to, and especially footwear is one of them. Um, there is a lot of venues where you can get down, and there's the odd rope and stuff, which has been already set up. Like where we are now, there's a rope which is already set up all the time now. Um, many years ago, there wasn't. I think Joseph's getting a bite, the way he's looking at um, but it is worth taking a rope. I would say anywhere where you're going to go down rocks with, with a bank or an incline, no matter how steep, how, how, whether it's steep or not, put a rope. You get a little stake. I got some made up, so I got some little bars made up with loops welded to the top of them. You can hammer one of them in the ground. Best to do three, like a triangle, really. Have it looped round, so you've always got a back up there. And sometimes we even put like scaffold bars with uh, the clips on the top and hammer them into the ground and then we can tie the rope off that just so you've got something secure because the last thing you want to ever be doing is go into a mark where you're going when you, you're holding onto a rope and the top going you've always got to have backups at the end of the day and um, I know a lot of guys like when I was younger I wouldn't use a rope to come down here necessarily um, there's a lot of marks where I don't but I just feel now, especially when you're working, you want to turn up for work on a Monday morning, you don't want to be uh, of a fall over or hurt yourself or broken ribs and stuff like that. And I've done it all in the past. I mean, some of the stuff I've done and the accidents I've had have been really, sometimes really stupid. I mean, remember me, Adam Slack and Stewie Norris went to a mark for the first time absolute nightmare to get down to uh, managed to get down all safe and to be honest of if there was an accident gonna happen you'd have thought getting down would have been the been the time we got down there the uh, i had i had um studs on on my waders and uh i didn't have waders on sorry i had, had wellies and uh, the the rocks were like glass and i went to move to go to cast and my legs come away under me and i automatically went to catch my foot and as i'd done it these rocks some of them were, were quite slaty and it cut right into my hand and um it, it, yeah i was uh, i was in a bit of pain and stuff and um to be honest i think i knocked myself out when i hit the floor um so the lads tell me i can't really remember that but um we're in a position where I've got to get back up the cliff now. I'm bleeding. I need to go to hospital. I need to get stitches and stuff. They wanted to call the Coast Guard. I wouldn't let them. I said, no, I can get back up. I, I, it, it, it's foolish, maybe. I mean, it could have an ever accident could have happened. But me being me, um, I wanted to get back up. You know what I mean? I felt, I felt, I felt well enough to get back up. But um, you just, as I said, accidents do happen. No matter how experienced you are, things happen you know what i mean i've gone to the floor and i've gone to jump from one rock to another and i've done my knee in and then i was like and it was prime time for small lives and uh it didn't stop me i had my knee braced up and uh, to cut a long story short the following week that one was just healing i went to do exactly the same thing and done the other rock the other one so i didn't learn my lesson but as i get older now I find myself just looking for safety more than anything. I mean, if I'm going somewhere, well, I want my hand, especially doing rock climbing and stuff now. Um, Any time I'm doing any sign of rock climbing, I'm always, always attached to a rope. Um, even on, on small inclines and stuff like that, if you've got a chance of falling, it just takes away that chance. You know I mean, you definitely rather have something to grab onto to make it safe getting up and down places rather than obviously risking your life. And no one wants to risk their life, guys. And over the time of fishing, I think we've all done silly things. And... Uh, you just learn by them at the end of the day. 
the sake of what a rope costs, I mean, you can pick up ropes quite cheap, really. Um, the, down here is just like normal blue builder's rope, like, but um, some of the mocks we've got, I've got a, um, a rope which I've bought, like a climbing rope and stuff. I've got a harness. Some places, I, I even put a little harness on just to get down. It allows me to have both hands free and just, like, I mean, all my stuff on my back, and I'm, I'm safe at all times. But anybody what's looking at thinking of doing this type of stuff, one thing I would recommend is going to do do like a climbing course. is is very recommend highly highly recommended. I mean, a few years ago I done a course and um, with abseiling and stuff like that. And then when we went back, we done a more advanced abseiling course, which involved going and using like the the um, like weights and stuff as you're going down over the cliff and more advanced in talks and what equipment to use and stuff like that. And I found it advanced me more for, to do that type of thing. I mean, over the years of fishing, some of the venues that we've we've gone to, um, and some of the venues magically ladders have appeared on sides of cliff and stuff, which you're going down on. You've got to like abseil down to get onto these ladders to be able to make it because of it's like sheer cliff, and you never get down without having like a rope attached to the top which you like basically coming up and down the ropes and um, you need the ladders there and stuff like that so you can see why anglers over time have put things like that in and uh, it's it's crazy things it really is some of the things you think you've done over the years just to go and catch a fish and uh, it's all right doing that type of thing but the main focus for all of it is safety you can't go doing this type of fishing if you're not willing to be safe and I think um, a few weeks ago now we've done a Star Bay, uh, Stare Bay video and um, I think myself and Mark Bryce done one in that week. We both included making sure you wear correct boots. And um, I think if anybody's doing these type of YouTube videos, my recommendation would be make sure you're including the safety side of it because you've got people watching and sometimes you've even got people watching which have picked up a rod for the first time and stuff and it's all right for someone going down to the beach and doing that type of fishing but for going from the beach to this type of venue for the first time can be a bit daunting and you could put yourself in a position where you think oh that's the rocks they're on i want to get down on those rocks but you just got to make sure it safety at all times guys it really is first thing i'd be looking at if i was going rock fishing boots more important than getting your rod rods there's no point going down there in trainers and slipping over and hurting yourself i mean the most important thing would be is your footwear um because that's enabling you to get down and up and back safely um and then it's just silly things really i, I mean ropes if you've got to put a little rope down even like a little 20 meter rope for this mark here if there was no movement it's all you need wouldn't it it's a safety at the end of the day but um yeah that's a safety talk done i know 99.9 .9 of you already know these type of the things i'm saying but it's it's just ed educating people when they're first starting off fishing um, not teaching people to suck heads eggs and stuff but i've just got i think that's a bite wouldn't it huh? i mean it's low low water now so we've got around six o'clock tonight high water so we've got the whole of the flood now it's a bit like the other time we're down here it's a big tide it's a spring tide basically we're on a 5.1 meter tide today and um I always go off for Salcom sort of tide times. So I know it's not a massive, massive spring, but it's a, it's a big enough spring to um, hopefully see this, this part of the coastline fishing. I prefer a bigger tide, as I stated in the last video when we've done down here. Um, it's, the, it's the water clarity is the main thing. I mean, it's very close in, it's quite murky, but it sort of cleans as it goes out now. But I, the, where it is really close in now, I like to see what it is like, like out there like that now. little uh, investment I got in got in the other day I went into Salford Sea Baits in Plymouth and I wanted something for placing because sometimes you don't want to be hauling place up especially if you get a big one so I picked this Tronics Pro um, rubber mesh net up and uh, light as light as hell and for the money just under 40 quid perfect for like placing and stuff like that racing gilting anything like that really so I picked it up just to go with the uh, collection so I've got two nets now I've got a telescopic like window cleaning net which i use for different marks where you, you need to get down from quite high i mean it goes to 20 extends to 22 foot i think so it's a good bit of kit but um it's quite heavy so it's venues where sort of out the car fishing really if you want to you want to walk any distance stuff you wouldn't want to carry that but uh yeah, it could do with a bit of a wider net on it i could use it for toping like that then 
But it's a question I've had, been asked. I've had a, for some reason, a couple, of, I reckon, say couple, I reckon I've had about between eight to 12 messages regarding motor pliers and fixed spools for some reason. I don't know why, but yeah, I've had this message come through, so I thought I'd, I'd sort of like share it with everybody really. But um, asking me the benefits of what one, and would you rather choose a fixed spool over a motor plier? It's a tricky one. I mean, me personally, I fished with a fixed ball for the first many years of fishing and um, I found the reason I stuck to the fixed ball more than anything was because of getting used to using a motor plier. Now a motor plier can put a lot of people off because when you first start fishing it's new, you've got to feed the line on, you've got to make sure the line's fed on properly, if you don't you've got the chances of birds nesting and stuff like that um, and it can be a real pain. I mean. I went from, um, so I had a surf blaster. I, I went for like some, some uh, Shakespeare ones and, and ever, ever makes like that. And then I eventually got some decent fixed balls, which were surf masters. And um, I had a Dawa Sandstorm uh, beach rod, Moonraker beach rod, and uh, Abu Conalong beach rod is my first pro sort of like proper rods, really. Uh, the rest of them were like sort of like 40 pound setups back then. You get a rod and reel for 40 quid, so 80 quid you had, had a full setup, which I used to love, you know what I mean? And uh, unfortunately, because of not, not obviously the brand, but they're not known for their like the quality like um, Shakespeare. I know they do lots of rods and stuff, but I found it's all like a cheaper end budget of the market, and um, it's ideal to get you out and fishing. But to be fair, what I found over time of using them, the rods were snapping because I was going to rock marks and stuff like that with them, and um, it made me want to spend a bit more money. And to be fair, the that was the Moonrakers at the time, lovely rods. I mean, a lot of backbone. The Abu Conalong is exactly the same. Um, I had the my mate had at the time he had the he had the reducer one. Then I had the, the next version with the twist lock reducer we used to twist, twist in and out i had that for years but i wanted to get a, a, a motor plier because he was using a motor plier and it, it was the abu um, six fives and uh, the sports rockets and that, everybody wanted them and that and uh, same with the five two fives and i sort of went you know what i'm gonna get one i got a six five abu and i just couldn't get on with it and i was using it when i was fishing and it was making me because i was birds nesting and stuff like that i just wouldn't enjoy my fishing so i remember one day i just literally swapped it with someone for a dower moonraker uh, dower moonraker fishing rod and it was the first decent rod i had at the time and um yeah i, I did it just took me a little while and then what i sort of done then is i uh, so, uh, didn't really come away from fishing but my fishing did, like i was getting into my teen late teenage years and stuff like that and more focusing and going out with like partying and meeting girls and stuff like that really and then when i started getting back into my fishing again when i was like late teens early 20s i thought you know what i'm gonna jump into the and i went and got a ppt um v viper evo viper um, Sidewind the Evo, sorry, I had first. So I had a pair of them and I bought them with a pair of 525 mags, the originals. And um, bird's nest after bird's nest. And you know what? One day I was watching, watching videos and stuff like that and I just thought, I'm just going to get it. And I, the pendulum cast wasn't right, but what I was focusing more of was winding in. So I was going to the beach with just the lead, casting out and just concentrating and feeding the line back through. And over time, I sort of got it. I mean, it can be off-putting, but it's the feeding the line that's the most important part of it. And and at the same time then is trying to catch and land the fish but also like do the line at the same time now there is type of places where i fish for type, like black bream for example which i'll bring spare reels because i'm fishing at distance and i'm fishing as when i say max distance you're probably talking 160 170 yards where we're, where we're fishing you want to get where you're basically getting right over the rough ground onto the cleaner ground um, and you can use different rigs by doing so, but you've got to be quick on the retrieve to get it to get the, the fish up over the rough ground. And you like really like a madman. And I found that sometimes I've gone to do them on X reel, and because I've not fed it on properly, because I'm too concentrating on like rushing to get it up, um, you'll get a snap crack off like that. So sometimes I'll put a couple of reels in. If I'm doing that, then I'll obviously go to the next, we'll go to the field, or go, go to the beach the next couple of days and just basically overhead cast and run it back and then wind the reel on again and, and so on. But to be fair, what, once I've got the hang of it, I feel like I wouldn't be out without it now. For me, 
a multiplier is very comfortable, especially when you're hauling big fish in. I, I use it, re some people use reel up. I prefer to use reel, reel, use reel down. Um, what I find with using reel down is you're using the whole length of the rod. And obviously a lot of the power is in the midsection of the rod. So the more the reels further up the rod, you've only, you're only using that much of the rod to, you know what I mean, when you're reeling the fish in from the reel, where if you're using the length of the rod, you're using from the butt, butt for the reel is straight to the tip. So you've got that much more leverage on the fish. Um, and personally, I feel that it's a more it's like a slightly more advanced way of fishing um but when you've mastered it i wouldn't want to see myself go back i mean i've tried using multipliers for gilt heads and, and flounder and stuff like that and i don't know um the simple fact that i think it's just just easier i mean half the time you don't need to cast and i find that the fish it's just a you, you you're just over cast and you're fishing with it where the gilts and the bass and, and the light estuary work is so you don't necessarily use that same as mulleting i'll always use a fixed ball but anything i'm using like for proper beach casting where i want to get distance and stuff like that um me personally i love the multiplier i really do um Having said that, I can see why people would, wouldn't want to use the multiplier and would venture more back to, mo to, to the fixed ball. I mean, if I learned to cast with a, with, with a multiplier, um, I can't cast the same with a fixed ball as I do a multiplier. So for me, the, I would find the, the multiplier personally would give me more of an edge when, when I'm fishing because not necessarily everywhere, but there's certain venues where I want to get... 180 yards out, you know what I mean? Anybody what's saying they're fishing 200 yards when they're fishing, unless they're an extreme tournament caster and they're using like 12 pound minimum line and stuff like that, are highly unlike, they're highly unlikely fishing at that, that. I would say you're looking 160 to 180 yards tops really, um, when you've got a bait and lead on. I mean, I'm not sure what they've done. I think they've done it a few, couple of times down Westwood with baits and leads on to see what they were hitting. I'm not sure if anybody got over 200, maybe with like lighter lines and stuff like that. But if you're using 20 pound main line and stuff like that with wind and stuff like that, if there's no wind and the wind was in your favor and that possibility, but I would say nine times out of 10, max sort of distance you're fishing is 160 yards, 170 yards maybe um, with a really good cast. Um, I wouldn't feel confident fishing personally with fixed ball hitting that of distance. Um, not to say that like where we are now, you'd be in the same sort of distance where I'm hitting because of the side wind with a fixed ball with a multiplier. But the question I'm asked is what, what do I prefer? Now, I've answered that question. Having said that, is that the right feedback to give to someone? Because at the end of the day, what, one's, what, what one man's meat's another man's poison. Um, for something what suits me might not suit someone else. So if people are struggling to get on with a multiplier and finding it hard to like get the uh, line leveled up over the spool and um, they keep on getting bird's nest and, and, and they're not really in the distance they want to be hitting with a, with a multiplier and they're not worried about distance, then my advice would be to go to a fixed ball because you got to enjoy your fishing. I think one of the most important things is, is about fishing is enjoying it. And uh, I've, I've, personally, if you if you were struggling with that, then that's what I would suggest. I mean, there is op options. You could go for a level wind. Now, a lot of people have asked me about advice with casting over time. I got them using a level wind multiplier first, just to get them used to the casting the rod with the reel. You know what I mean? And after time, then they're concentrating on feeding the line. Now, it's second nature to me now. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm like, ah, boom, 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 straight away. My thumb's automatically doing what I need it to do. The line's leveled it on. I'm, I'm fishing nine times out of ten. I'm, I'm not, I'm not getting bird's nest when I go fishing. You know what I mean? The only chance of if I get snapped off or snagged up and stuff like that, it is what it is. But personally, I don't have that problem. The old, my my main issue, if I'm honest, and it's down to greed. If I get a bird's nest, it's down to being greedy, because I'm I like my reels running on the edge, and I mean fast. Joseph had a pair of my re old reels, and um, it, they're they're are probably one of the fastest pair of fathoms you'll ever see. I mean, you spin them, and they'll go and go and go. He's got another pair now, which are uncontrollable. Um, he needs to mag them because they're running that fast, but. I like my reels running like that. For anybody first starting off, I would never recommend to have your reels running that fast. I know, I know anglers what physically don't want their reels running that fast because they don't like, they, they, they want to have a, like a smooth reel for fishing, which is controllable and not going to do that. Having said that, 
I'll take a lot of things into consideration. I'll turn up to a mark. If there's no wind and I know I can get away with it, I can let the mags off and, and let it fly. If I'm getting to a wind like today and I've got a lot of side wind come through, I would turn the mags down. You've got to know your reels at the end of the day. You've got to know how to how to peak, peak, tweak them and, and, and when to let them off and when to hold them back. And I think that, that sort of thing there only comes with knowledge and and um, and time really, getting to learn and, and know what you work with. Now, there's a lot of reels which, to be honest, I haven't fished with. Now, I know the fathoms. I personally know my reel. I know how to set it, how many turns where I, where I, where I could get away with without no wind. Maybe I could do like two turns or three turns or two and a half turns. There's been times in the last couple of weeks I've gone to do it. And I'm not, I've got there and I've gone, that was a bit too much. I need to turn that down slightly. Um, at the end of the day, there's that was amazing. There's birds. He just hit a fish as well. The birds just literally swum down like that, smashed the fish and gone up again. It looked like a sand deal. It might be the gar. Dive bomb. That's always a good sign. When you see fish around the water, dive bomb. What are you after, Joe? You're what, mate? On the line. So, yeah, it's, as I said, guys, it's, it's, it's the only way I can really answer the, the question. But if you're, if you're fishing and you, you're spending time re-spooling line on your motor plier, not getting on with level like lining the line up properly and having that issue um my advice would be to go to a fixed spool having said that for a lot of anglers what what have obviously stuck to the motor pliers and like mastered them i wouldn't see the, personally the the bonus of going back to a fixed spool personally i feel more confident um with the way i'm, I'm holding the motor plier so I'm, I'm basically using the, so the tips, the, the eyes are underneath. I've got full lift, from, like lift with the rod. I'm using the power of the rod. And um, I use multiplies different things, don't get me wrong. I use fixed balls for different things. But if I'm fishing, like, like beach sort of style fishing or rock fishing, it will be 20 pound line on, on Fathom, Fathom 15s. If I'm using 12 pound line or 15 pound line, I'll go to the Fathom 12s or maybe go to the um, Dawa STs. And if I'm doing rough grounding, like 25 pound main line, I use the Dawa um, slosses and I'll have like uh, 25 pound main line on them. I've also got the slosh 40s, which um, SHAs, I think, and uh, those ones there I've got 40 pound main line on. So I use them for like if I'm going out and out hussing or going eeling and stuff like that. But the, my advice would be it's down to the angler's preference. If you are struggling putting the lines and stuff like on and you're finding it getting in the way of your fishing, then my recommendation would be going back to fixed spool. But if you can control a multiplier and you know what you're doing with a multiplier, um, you're always going to have the benefits of the multiplier, I feel. I mean, it's, as I said, one man's meat to another man's poison. But I've answered the question. It's something why I had come in, like, I don't know, for some reason, it was like four or five messages in one morning, Andy, and I was like, all the same sort of thing. And I thought, you know what? It's, I'll just answer it on camera. Easiest thing to do. There's some massive white horses out there, guys. Look at these. It's coming over to the point. And uh, yeah, you can see the headlands completely covered us and sheltered us from the, uh, from the wind here now. Hopefully the fish play ball. Off for then, Joseph, he reckons. Okay guys, I'm going to check my bait again. It's, uh, it's been out there for about another 10 minutes. I've got a feeling I'm not going to get this one back either, but... Really? Yeah. That's snagged. Oh, I 
think that's the actual leader. It's not good. Nightmare. That goes to show, guys. There's rotten bottoms on there now. It's gone at the leader. Which is a nightmare. Put a new uh, leader on this one then. Get back at it. So, spider it. This easy. Loop over your line, create a bow, once around your finger, twice around your finger, three times around your finger, four times around your finger. Back up through the loop, done it quite big, it's time to make it show for you. Create these little there, pull back on each one, make sure you try and do it individually so it all pulls in together. Sliver, pull tight. Check. Yeah, mine's literally just gone on the leader knot there then. Which is a nightmare. Do you know what? We used to fish this for years and never have this issue. Never. But times change. Obviously, I, I think that's down to anglers myself. I think that's down to people coming down here and fishing that part of the route thing there without rotten bottoms. Because, um, as I said, it never used to fish like that. You used to get at distance. You used to get away with bringing the lead back in. You didn't. I mean, you 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 were getting your rotten bottoms back every time. I've just lost the rig and then just got jammed up straight away. Pull the light down. It's important at this stage there. Now you do it both of the sides, and then with this bit here, pull down like so. That's a spider itch. Very strong, very easy to do. Okay. Three. Please don't row. I think Chelsea's going to help me out there. One, two, three, four, five. That's enough of that. Go right down to the clip bit. Cheers, buddy. Cut that off there like that. Let Joseph through. So, clip back there now. It's gone five times around my spool. And then what I'm looking for is my little clip box, which is here. And I'm also looking for my rig wallet. Tell you what, let's get this done first. So I'll take a little clip box with me, a little one like that. I've got the bottoms, some power swivels in there. Pull that down, back over itself. With my knots, I put my foot, finger in like that. Come down through, right? And that's it, that's all I do. I need to do get a lead so with the lead you can literally link, link him in like that pull tight as strong as you like guys trim that off where you go right next step so I'm gonna scale down my hook size now I'm gonna go for four rows A five volt, okay. So, the other thing I'm going to do is shorten my rigs. So, I'm going to get a pulley rig like this. These are quite long pulley rigs. It's what I use for blonde rays. The good thing about this is I can sort of like change my rig now, can't I? Because what I can do is I can look put up the top and think to myself, do you know what? That's, that's all right for you. And then all I got to do there then is pull the trace down like that, clip in there. 
and make sure that my other side is a little bit bigger for the knot, right? So I can clip in there like that. But I could have done that first. So I've got to pull my other bits off there now. And then I can put the bead. There's a proper pulley there from um, Breakaway. I love those proper pulleys. And then I've got a uh, rubber bead there then, which will go over the top of that, into that. Okay. Then. Imp. That is my favourite bait clip, the imp. Some people won't like them. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I love them. Um, it will take up to a certain size hook and then I would go for a splash down, but I, I, love, I love the imps. I am a big fan. All right, okay, so we'll take that off there now. And then I'll, uh, I'll clip that onto that there on the rig. Pull that tight. I can clip that up like so. And then, the good thing about these clips now, my proper pulley will fit. straight down into the top of it, okay? Then I should be left with a lovely little trace, long enough for the pulley rig. So what I've got first, see that? It's an offset chinny. So I use that at the top, basically turn it around the hook a couple of times, just take them out, they get out of the way. I've got the big gun ultra points. I like these bigger size boxes, they've got 25 hooks in them, and uh, they're ideal, but they do break easy. So uh, what I'm a nightmare for is just chucking them up to the go and I've got to sit there for hours. I'll just give Joseph a load because I, um, I couldn't be bothered to go through them. But he's got loads of hooks there now for guilting and stuff like that, smaller sizes. But um, I need to get some boxes for them, really. And then pull that down there like that. Exactly the same. But what I do with my hook, pull on, I come back up through the top of it like that. All right. Then... Pull down like that. Lovely. That ain't undoing. Can clip that down quite tight there now. Hard as you like. Job done. Pick all my bits and pieces up. Hooks and everything else. I'll put the hooks in that box there just in case they do come out. I ain't got to play around with them like so. Um, you got that thingy there, Joe. 20 pound line. Put all that in there like that now. Leftover squid. Just chuck in the water there. Thank you very much, sir. So, my rotten bottom. So, I can put that straight on the end of my imp. Like that. Get this line. What I tend to do is just tie it on first, so I'll get the top of it like that. And then bring him in. Exactly the same. One, two, three, four, five. Up through the line. Tag end down. Then I like to use about 12 inches, okay? About foot of line. And what I'll do is I'll get my finger and I'll, I'll pull down like that and I'll create a loop up the top. Then I'll get my finger again, pull a loop at the top. So I've got one with about an inch and a half in between each one. And exactly the same again. I think so. I've got three knots there. Don't double up those knots because they make it too weak. But those knots will basically, because you're using 20 pound main line, you've got the spider itch knot. It just weakens that point of line. So the, the weakest point in your line, your rig going through to that lead now, should be that part on the bottom. So a bit of tension there, especially using over the line as well. Um, you should just break off every time. <laughs> Having said that, if we keep getting snagged here, I'm going to move. We can just go back in front of the rope where we went we fished before. I mean, it's slightly deeper water where I am at the minute. Um, straight off this island where me and Joseph are. And me and Lee Treby over the years have had some really good sessions down here. Me and the other lads have come down here and had some really good sessions down here. It's just a shame, really. But... Um, my, my, I would rather favour this part of it, but where the ground's been like it is now, 
I think more so if you're gonna come down here, you wanna go in front of the rope really, because um, this, this has sort of been killed really, if I'm honest. I mean, as I said, we used to literally come down here, you would bang out 150 yards and it would just like come around to the side. And then you, the only chance you would get, if it went too far of a fish, um, you could get the chances of getting hooked up on the reef on the right hand side of you. But nine times out of 10, you'd pull up over the rough ground with a rotten bottom and you'd get the fish up the shoreline. I mean, I've had bullets come here sideways because of the, the way that they've come around in the tide. So it's just one of them really. But yeah, so that, that's it basically there, guys. So what happens is that one there comes up with the wind, that one drops down and that acts as your rotten bottom. And when you want to do it, what I do is just curl it around. So it's got a loop with well, the loops facing downwards, bring them up and I literally set him I'll show you how I set him now. I'll set him right at the top. You can see there's like a little bend, what bends down. And I, it can set there, but I prefer to have it come up like that. That way, as soon as it's a water, you know it will release. Nice little touch. Right, we're getting baited up now. Got the baiting stuff there, Joe. Hurry up. Cheers, mate. Have you been? Have you tried Sandy on his own yet? Yeah. One pack of Sandy are gone. I go double Sandy. Double Sandy bait up on this one. Okay. So as I said, I've sort of scaled down the bait size here now. And uh, away we go. So these absolutely lovely eels from that. I mean, um, I know we do a lot for uh, hookers baits and stuff, and they do fun house asset bait. So, uh, but I don't think up that way they get the sand eel. I don't, don't think a lot of people that like bait companies do get them like they like this now. And uh, Matt at Southwest Sea Baits, the, the 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 quality of the eel was absolutely absolutely phenomenal. And there it goes again. <laughs> but um, the uh, the quality in them is superb. It really is. And they remind me of the old ammo blues. I mean, the 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 way the way the eel bleeds and the, just the condition of the eel. I mean. They are they're really top knots but um i'm gonna i'm gonna basically what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut one eel okay I come right the way down the top of some of it then what i'm gonna do now is bring this hook i'm gonna come right through the back of its head and then i'm gonna bring the line down like so okay so that's sat in there like that that hook points out proud now, right? So they're exactly the same with the bigger eel of the two. Cutting behind the thing, I just cut them on the back of the, uh, on the tail there, scent more than anything. So loads of people do this differently, it's the way I like to do it. Then I'm gonna run that eel lengthways along there now. So it basically just thickens the eel up. Okay, I find this is a really good way of targeting bullets. Um, all the best bullets I've had, I've come on double sand eel baits. And um, I think, especially where we are, they're in the bay now, they'll be chasing them in this rough conditions. And uh, you, as I said, you've got a chance of spotties, you've got a chance of small lives, you've got a chance, throughout here, you've got a chance of like pretty much all the rays. I mean, I've had blondes, I've had small lives, I've never had massive blondes. And it's, it's weird though, really, because certain marks around there, you will get the blondes, but like 10 pound, 12 pound seems to be the, the biggest they, they come in at, which is, which is strange, because you've got scaries out there with the monsters. But um, it is a it is a place you can pick them up. So anybody that's looking for that type of fish, especially at certain times of the, of the year and stuff, it's definitely worth venturing down. That's got spotty written all over it, if I'm honest. Okay. Like so. Lovely. All right. Now get this big hook at the, at the end now. Pull them down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get him close to where I need to go, three, four, right? And I'll pull him right in there like that now. And that's it. That, my friends, is a bait ready to go out there and catch me a fish, hopefully. He's a boy, Joseph, isn't he? <laughs> Bless his cotton socks. Right, we're going to get him out now, guys, and uh, see if we can get a fish out. Joseph, just ring it, reeling another one in now.
Sammy's back in the water down the bottom there. Right, let's get him out there then. See if we can get one out. The wind's dropped down now as well. That's the one. That is where I want to be. That wind just dropped right down there then. That's exactly where I want to be. No pull off with the line. Not much side wind at all there then. And uh, hopefully this can be the one. So guys, see this bait up here, what Joseph's put out, he's had a big slack line bite. But where that hook is and where the top hook is and where the fish has taken it, it does look very ray to me because rays normally come in over the top and then they grab and that's the sort of damage they normally do. So this one hasn't hooked properly, I don't think, but there is a chance of a good, good spotted out there today, especially in these conditions. So you can see the tide starting to uh, flood now. Skies have gone really overcast. So um, I'm just hoping the rain holds off really, but um, as that starts to approach and it sort of like get to the, Near enough where that wave just hit the wetness of the rock gear now. That's what the sort of, sort of time of the tide I like it here. Um, as it's starting to flood and that, rod tip's bent over. Um, you've got a little bit of tide there, which you want. And uh, fingers crossed we can get the fish biting. I mean, this is definitely a revenge mission after the last session down here. But um, anything can happen. I mean, the seals, I don't know what... Because I haven't fished this area for many years and that. It's going to, um, it's going to, I think the seals would have a big effect on it because especially free seals in this area, the amount of fish it's going to consume is, um, is unreal really. But uh, yeah, as you can see, just pool sands down to the left. Looks like there's two anglers down there, you know, B sands looks empty and uh, there's the bay. Just need that rod tip to go over now. I do like the glass tips, I've got to be honest. The next one, I think, is, um, is the T1s. I want something in between that as well, if I'm honest. I've got the um, 435s, which, um, which are lovely ones. I wish I, I had them more with the real seats on today, really, because I would have I would have brought these down there. Really, I think you want the carbon tip for this type of fishing. I mean, the, the T9s are under it, but you want that instant as you pick up that no movement in the tip so it's just straight connection okay guys there's a bite <laughs> yep On the surface. What is it? Not sure exactly. Huss, I think. Huss. We got the huss, I think. Oh. Looks half decent. Oh. Can't see it properly.
Yeah, we got a good one. Well, I said double figured hus. And I think we got one. I don't know if it's double figures, is it? Not quite. Maybe not double figured, but it's still a nice fish. I don't know, he's got some girth to him. Lead's gone. Uh, that for a, it's not a double figure, is he? Look at that, guys. <laughs> he's not the one we wanted. He's not that 14 pounder, is he? But uh, look at that. What a fantastic sight. I mean, just to show what's uh, what fish in these type of waters. I don't know, he'd probably go, I don't know. Eight pound-ish, I'd say, maybe. I don't know. We'll get him on the scales in a minute. Get the bag out and uh, see how he goes. Ah, what a fish. Look at that mouth on him. Hey. Okay, guys. So, uh, as I said, I don't think he's going to make eight pounds, but I've got this all set up here now. I've actually got the, the um, cool box because I don't want to weigh it properly. So, what I'll do is I'll turn the scales on I'll zero them. There you go. Zero that. Get that on film. So zeroed. And then what I'll do is when they get the fish, I'll weigh him basically to protect his inner organs. Seven pound three, seven pound three. All right. As I said, you've got to try and weigh these correctly and try and hold them up. I've had people say about holding them up when you get them on by the tail on the rock. Sometimes, guys, you're on very slippy rocks and you've got to do what you can do. But obviously, it's not the massive fish we're after, but it is a hustle the same. Well, an absolutely beaut from the sea. Not that absolute monster we wanted, but nevertheless, an absolute lovely fish. There he is, seven pound three. Going to get a quick picture. Hopefully you'll find that brother or sister or that big granddad. 14 pound would be lovely. As I said, it's a small fish for you. I'm going to get him, try and get him back now as quick as we can. Quick photo and release back to fight another day. Look at that. Okay, guys, I'm going to get this one returned now. I'm walking back as close as I can. As I say, basically trying to hold, it, hold its belly up over. And uh, I'll try and get as low as we can down here to the sea. <coughs> Hopefully he can get his granddad. Game on. Let's go get some more. So, we can uh, hopefully see his granddad out now. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Let's get another lead out. As I say, we're only fishing one rod each here at the minute. <laughs> Two secs, I'll have that, mate. So. so I've had a third cast and I've lost three leads and one rig. Um, as you see, that fish took off straight away and took the lead straight away. So it's important to have these rotten bottoms on. So, I'd love to have had the video down there then of it, the fish coming across the water. I'm hoping you picked it up. I'm not sure if you did. But um, Joseph, it's too dangerous for Joseph to be landing fish and filming at the same time. I mean, it's quite sketchy down there and wet on the rocks and stuff. So it's safety at all times, you know what I mean? So uh, hopefully you could uh, get the adrenaline sort of side of it 
I thought it was going to be a better fish, if I'm honest, as it came out of there. It was hard to tell, tell because uh, it sort of like picked up in the tide. And as I was reeling as fast as I can, the tide was moving the fish as well, but with no lead on. But uh, he was a lovely colour in, nice and light. So that's one good thing. But um, as I can see, it's the uh, first fish of the trip. Hopefully Joseph can get in one now. I mean, there'll be fish out there feeding over high water. And uh, as I said, the tide's approaching that time I'm, I'm starting to like. And I, I think we've really got a good chance of getting a double fig figured uh, huss out of here today. I really do. Nice to see Joseph get beat his PB as well. What's your PB, Joe? So if Joseph gets a double, he's beat his PB. So let's hopefully see Joseph nail that fish. Nice. Double sand deal that time. Get that over. As I said, that on the last cast, I sort of knew that's the sort of distance you want for them. You need to get it out there onto that, like not actually in the rough rough, just on the clean on the rough, which I find, not to say that that's where the bullets are going to be in the rough, but fishing with 20 pound mainline and that as well, and getting your gear back, I find that most of the time, like that then, you're targeting the rays and you're getting into the bullets. So knowing that's the case of it, um, it's the way to go, isn't it? So what should we do now? What I'm going to do now, I've got a squid, squid bait, and a sand deal bait. So I'm basically going to cut the sand deal, like so, head and tail it. Okay, I'm going to cut this squid in half. Just use half a squid. We haven't got loads and loads of bait, and I think with it high water coming through, we're going to need a little bit. So uh, let's make him do it. At least we've got that fish today. That's what we come here for. All right, so I'm going to bring the, bring the hook down. Sort of come all the way down through and bring it out the back like that all right like so and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this squid now to uh basically tee off with him over the top i've got my bait elastic here somewhere which is over here so if i can get this bait elastic off just trying to cover the um the line So that fish there wasn't a monster we're after, but uh, you can see in the past trips that we've had, some of the fish we've had over the time. Um, there's a session I've done down here, it was on the YouTube channel, I think, uh, with Lee Treby, and it was set the same conditions a day, a bit more dirtier, and we had fish over the 14 pound mark that day and lost bigger. So um, it really is, it really is a, a good pace to fish in the, these sort of conditions. I mean, a lot of people were sat at home now Obviously, in the weather's really bad and stuff, but as you see, we, there is always somewhere to go. Um, to get out the wind is the main thing. But as you can, as you can see today, we sort of uh, beat everything in front of us and pull the fish out. So we just need to see if we can uh, keep going. I mean, the seal weren't interested in, in that then, which is another good thing. And uh, I think if there's one bullet there, there'll be more. And uh, hopefully we can see them out. Lovely. So we're going to get that one there out there now and uh, go and find his granddad. Okay, folks. So, another one. The wind's not going do lally at the minute. So I'm going to try and get this one out to the same place as I got the last one. I mean, the distance here is, is the key, I find, especially if you're fishing for the rays and stuff. Just trying to get it out over that rougher ground onto the clean. As I said, we lost the rig every time then because the fish was hooked up, lifting it up over the rougher ground. So uh, yeah, hopefully we can get this one back as well. Checking the line for the tip. Exactly the same. No side wind. 
a little bit of distance and uh, hopefully we can get into another one. The fight with that fish then, the rod tip just went straight over and it went slack and uh, obviously with a pulley rig it's, it's already hooked and it's just took off and the rotten bottom's done its thing and released straight away. I found it with a drop down rig, you get finicky bites and I basically hold it up and you can feel when the fish pulls. As soon as that fish pulls down with a drop down I'm straight into it and then that's when the lead pulls off but with the pulley rig it works a bit differently. I find with a pulley drop down rig, a lot of people don't like it, but bite detection on them and stuff when they're fishing like tides and stuff with the dog fishing that. But I find them, especially when you're fishing like that, I've never had the issue myself. As long as you pull back and set that rig, because the fish is going to pull against the, lot, against the weight, especially if you've got the ratchet on, on, on release, you're going to get a pull run bite with it as well. It's quite tight that. So the glass tip done its thing then if i'm honest because the glass tip was lovely then because it sort of like pulled right down and see, seen the bite i thought it was a better fish if, I, if i'm honest and i've seen it come in it was looking quite long but um it, nice girth to it it's not the right size you need it a 10 pounder is what i'm always looking at you're after a specimen in you you know what i mean i know everybody's got their own specimen weights individually and stuff like that and people what they fish to with clubs and even the weights we've just set but my own personal preference is when i go for a small light i want a 10 pound fish when i go for a bullet i want a 10 pound fish when i go for a smooth out i want a 10 pound fish you know what i mean it's different weights and stuff like that but uh yeah we're uh, we're getting away with one rod each at the moment so uh fingers crossed we get into a few more joseph with a bite here now Fish on. Fish pulled you in. Huh? Wind's starting to come around on us now. This has been out for a little while now without a touch, so I'm going to bring him in. So uh, it's my, it's my fourth, fourth cast of the day. I'm only using one rod today, guys, just to, to the fact of uh, where we're fishing is quite tight. We might move back in front of the rope on the way out um, over the top of the tide just to see if we can pull a ray out on that cleaner ground. But is that a bite? I don't think it was. But um, you're just trying to get a big double-figured huss out for the trip now. I mean, sometimes you just got to stick to your guns and just go for what, you, what the target is. I mean, now's perfect time, really. But, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get one out. Let's get this one back in. There's nothing on here now, I don't think. But um, we can get this one back in then, and then uh, hopefully get it back in. I mean, Joseph just lost, lost the set as well. But uh, let's see if we can get another fish out next cast. Same problem with me. Definitely, definitely. Oh, this one's moving. Wee. <laughs> Trying to go sideways with it because it's a glass tip. Nightmare. I don't want to put all that strain on the rod. I'm gonna lose this. Yeah, he's just gone. I don't know if I've got the rig back on that. It's 
still some tension there, so don't know. See it? My line's on the sand. It's coming back with line on the sand, so I know full well that um, I'm on that cleaner ground. What I think is, I think it's a snags, if I'm honest. Yeah, line's gone. Line's coming in behind me now. It's a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. But, um, of course, you stick with it, and you just got to stick with it. Use some rotten bottoms as well, guys, which is the correct way of doing things. But the trouble is, if you've got that many line snags out there, it's um, slow wind. I think, personally, I'm going to go and have a go for a ray. To go back further into the bay. I mean, coming up to the top of the tide now, you've got a chance of a spotty in here today. So, uh, maybe worth to see if we can get one out. I mean, you've just lost one as well, haven't you? So, it might be worth the fact, because we can put two rods out each there. I think that's the plan of attack, you know. That's the plan of the attack. So, we've moved down what I like to call Rayland. <laughs> it's a bit more cleaner ground in front of us here. And, uh, there is obstacles in the way, I'm not going to say there's not. You've always got the odd bit of mixed ground here, but nine, 99, to, 99 times out of 100, you get your gear back. But after the last couple of sessions here, I don't put anything past it. I just think, I just think it's, um, it's been fished not in the correct manner, unfortunately. And uh, I know guys that um, tell me stories about guys who've come up from other parts of the country up to North Wales, Top fishing and uh, instead of going up there and using mono they've gone up and they're using like 80 pound braid and braid up there and unfortunately they don't realize it themselves but they've killed a lot of the marks up there now and the reason they've killed it is a simple fact that simple fact that it's caused artificial reefs and with braid braid doesn't d dissolve over time i mean mono after years and years and years it get weaker and weaker and weaker until it just goes not to say that fish and that can't get caught up in it on it because because they can but um really i know a lot of like northeastern and stuff like that and uh people use braid but on those specific type marks really you don't need to use braid you should be using mono because you're fishing rough ground targeting taupe and the last thing you want to be doing is getting t snagged up and uh, leaving a taupe on and uh, just snagged right up where he can't get off. You know what I mean? It's going to be ended up with loads of dead taupe all over the place, which you don't want. I mean, I know uh, a couple of the skate marks, I'm told, over years, they get the fish, but they can't land and they end up getting snagged up on the side of the banks and stuff. That's why a lot of people use the boats to bait. Boat, uh, bait their boat their baits out and uh, that's a simple reason so instead of hauling a fish up like that you're hauling the fish up over like that you've got more chance of getting the fish up in the water rather than getting stagged and caught on the on the bank i mean it's fish care at the end of the day but um you got the scissors don't know what he's done with my scissors oh, has he got them still i thought he had them that's her in here Hopefully they're in here. Yeah, they're in here. Lovely. So. I hate losing gear unnecessarily. You know what I mean? I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, I always try to tackle up to the venue and fish it accordingly. And uh, if you're fishing mixed to rough ground and you've got a chance of snagging up, you should be using rotten bottoms. I mean, last time we come down here for the place, I know we were using bomb leads in the video. But uh, many years ago, as I said, we'd come down here and we'd be free of snags all the time. You could get away with it. Now it's just, it's just, uh, it's like a tackle graveyard out there, unfortunately. But uh, there you go. I'm going to fish rotten bottoms in front of me now, here now. Um, I've got like five leads left. So I'm going to fish one rod for a minute again, I think. And then if I start getting the gear back, I'll switch on another lead, uh, another rod out. I might put another rod out anyway and just did it into the bay and put a fixed lead on it. Three, come on. Lovely. 
So, that's that one set up again. I'd like to see Joseph get a big bullet out. I mean, he's come down, come down from uh, up his, uh, his way. And they don't get like bullets and that, like that sort of size they get down here. And same as spotties, really. So I know he really wants a big spotty. I took him a few years back now, down after the blondes. And he managed, uh, it was quite early on when the, when the time you get the big spotties coming in. He had a 5.7, he was over the moon with it. Lovely fish, first cast. No, it wasn't first cast, was it? You had that spotty halfway the night, didn't you? Fifth cast. Fifth cast, yeah. Lovely fish. <laughs> Definitely repaid off for the walk. I mean, a lot of people have never had a ray where, where, where I took him. It uh, can be very hit and miss. At the same time, he uh, he produced the goods and managed to uh, do the business, which is uh, which is always wanted. So, all or nothing here today, I think. All or nothing. I'm actually targeting a spot, you know. So I'm going to use a longer rig. Got a chance of a, you've got a chance of a small idea now as well, so it's uh, it's always on the cards. Lovely. So that's that. Um, what shall I put on here? Do you know what? I'm gonna thick, put a fix uh, a boat of uh, a bomb lead on this one. I think. Move them around a little bit. See how we get on. Then I'm going to use two, one of the four rows, like that, one of the uh, octopus hooks, make sure he's a sharp one, like that, put the octopus down first, we have a hook in there like so. Pull him tight. Let's get a sand deal bait on here now and see if we can get that uh, big spot, yeah, eh? So, get this one on here now. Should have my bait elastic somewhere. Cool bag. I do love these cool bags. I do apologise for the brightness, guys. It's uh, overcast big time now. It's great, totally grey skies, and uh, it's just a it's just, just a case of um, we can only film what we can film. So like that. And I'm actually going to fish this with a spot pilchard. I mean, spotties really like bluey. Blueys are really good bait for a spotted ray. I know, I know, guys will fish fish bluey on its own for spotties. Um, they seem to like a mixture of bait. Where small eyes, I've always found small eyes fish better with sand there. If I'm honest, I've had small eyes on crab though as well up the channel. So it is one of them. Okay, guys. So I've got sand eel and pilchard on a running up and over rig, but I've also got a eight ounce bomb lead. Okay, to get a bit of movement. I'm gonna hit him out onto the left now into the bay. And uh, hopefully we can see a ray on this. Be nice, wouldn't it? Fingers crossed. Watch your head a minute. Right out there. <laughs> Lovely. No side wind. Exactly where I want it. Fingers crossed we can see a spotty on that.
gonna loosen the drag off. Just so if I get a fish hit it, it's uh, it allows it just to take line really now. But um, yeah, we've got a little bit of wind, nothing we can handle. Hopefully, we'd like to get that tip down a little bit really. Might bring this tip down a little bit, like so. If I can get the eye, uh, that'd be better, wouldn't it? There you go, allows it to take line. Get the other rod set up now. So, time to get the other rod set up. This would be nice. What's that? Is that a bite? I just had a big slack line bite. Ooh. What I find with fish in the bomb lead, I'm a big fan of a bomb lead, and I've got to be honest, I really am. But what I find is, You got to be on the ball with it, because especially with the rays and that, they slacken it off a lot. When we got a fixed grip, I think they take it off straight away. But um, a thick trick I find with it is to, is to tighten your drag up, and then uh, just allow that reel to take line. They'll hook themselves in the end. Let's get this other rod set up. Now, another question I've had recently is, um, is about the T9s. And I've done a video on it a few year, uh, months ago now, and uh, I was saying about how I had them a couple of times, and the first time I had them, I never liked them. And uh, I found them quite tippy. And some guys have obviously messaged me and found the same. And the reason that is, is because it's glass tip. And it was my fault, not the rod's fault. I mean, these rods are a serious bit of kit, but they can be a lot for maybe someone just starting out or someone not casting the rods correctly. I mean, you need to not cast off the tip. If you're casting off the tip of the rod, so basically you're casting inside the tip, um, you'll, all you'll do is, is, is bend the tip action of the rod, where if you cast outside of the tip, you'll get into the midsection of the rod. And as long as you get into the midsection of the rod, they are a very fantastic bit of kit. I mean, casting wise, that's the way. If you, if you hook a fish on them, you really can feel the power in the rod. Um, they are a joy to use. They really are. And uh, the bite detection on them is phenomenal. It really is. They need sanded down a little bit, I think, because they... Uh, I haven't had them that long, but the, the, the um, spigot is quite tight. And when I say tight, I mean tight. It is the right section there. And so you know it is the right bit. Nice. So what, what, what I've basically done... Nightmare. It's because it's been sat in the sun for a little while now, I think. I've never had this problem before, so I'm honest. What I'm going to do is 
set it up. A little bit. That's it. Like where? Way too much. I'm gonna do it again, am I? Be here all day at the minister eight guys. So maybe you put a video of putting a rod together. That seems alright anyway now. So I'll put that one there. But as I said, it really is um, for those that, those of you that aren't getting on with them, what I would do is just let the lead go round longer when you're casting them. If you let the lead do its thing and move to the outside of the tip before casting, so you're casting outside the tip then um, you really will fit see all the benefits and i'll show you a little bit in a minute of just uh, how you can see the difference with them and it's and it's easy to see so basically what i'm trying to say is you're casting off the glass the glass tip so you imagine the bite detect detection on the glass tip and that's all you're getting when you're casting is just the tip bending and uh, you'll, you'll really see the difference with what I'm about to show you. I'll just do it with a lead. So, if you watch this tip now, right, I'm doing that now, right? It's all tip action. Okay? All tip action. Now, if I pull and get Joseph to hold the camera again further back, because I'm going to have to come outside the tip now, right? So, just out your experience, Joseph, if I pull that now, am I putting any strain on the butt section? No, can't, feel it at all. can't feel it at all, right? If I come to here and I pull, yeah, I can pull Joseph off. Off if I now he's got he's got his thing. I can literally pull like that. I'm pulling him forward. Okay, that's the difference. If I stand here and I'm casting here, right, all I'm going to do is break the tip. If I if I really went back like that, because I'm not creating no power in this buck set section. So when you're casting, you need to let that lead move around to the outside of the tip. If you move, let it go, go through, and as you come to turn into it, you'll get into this midsection. As soon as you're into the midsection, it really is a, f a fantastic bit of kit. It really is. The rod, the power in the midsection of the rod is phenomenal. And the, the tip section as well, you've got the fantastic bike detection on it. And um, it's a very expensive rod. It's a high range rod. And uh, like I said before, guys, for me, it's one of the best rods ever built. It is, a, it is a legendary bit of kit. I mean, I would like to personally to see from the Century range something in between the Eliminator T900, that's T GT, and the T1000. Um, they haven't got a T1100. And what I, what I feel personally is they could do this rod here with a carbon tip, okay? And, and me and Joseph were talking about earlier on, and it would stand in the, between the T1000 and the T, T900. Um, but it would also give you, it, it would just be a fit for, for me personally, the T1000 is a machine, it really is. The power in that rod is, is, is unreal. And um, you, need to, you need to get into the cast to bend that rod, to get the full potential of the rod. As I said, it's more of a, an experienced angler's rod, in my, in my opinion, um, when it comes to casting and stuff like that. And, um, if you're just fishing for the just starting off fishing and stuff like that there's other rods are out on there are, are available on the market who are a lot easier and user friendly to cast but um me personally i would like the t1000 go up to like the t1100 and that sort of thing because it'd be next steps down for the t12 and then the, the uh, uh, this rod here but with a carbon tip fit in to like the t1000 sort of area then if you know what i mean um i just feel there's a there's a big gap between the t9 and the t t1 and um it, for me personally it would be i was always a fan of the su and it's something which i feel sometimes the t1000 can be a bit overkill for raying i mean it, is, it really is a machine i mean you get into that for the rod it can put you on your ass it really can the power in it is is unreal but um yeah i'm gonna get a set one up now guys but as i can as i said for, that's a question i get asked all the time regarding the t9 i got asked the other day and uh, for those of you that are, have got it and cast it and you're not getting on with it you just go around and play with it honestly once you start getting into the midsection of this rod it is a, it is a fantastic bit of kit are we going to get lucky? Bit of sunshine coming out here. Whee! Okay, so setting up the rod, of a rod up now. So I've got that running um, up and over on the um, on the bomb lead there at the minute. Okay, and uh, I'm just going to set this one here up, and um, with 
Joe, can you chuck us that uh, line there? What? The rotten bottom line. He's going to just get him to chuck me the rotten bottom line in a minute, mate. Here, mate. So, set this one up here. Oh. Right out the wind here where I am, which is nice, but um, also right out the sun. You want that daylight, it's not very nice for the camera with that dull picture, is it? It's nothing like a bit of sunshine. As I said, this rain, I think, it's putting a downer on everyone at the minute, isn't it? I mean, it's just, you get up in the morning and it's raining, and you go to sleep and it's raining, and you wake up in the middle of the night and it's raining, it's just never-ending, which um, hopefully it can change, because I feel that it just puts a downer, as I said before, on everybody's sort of like life, really. Everybody's sun sunshine comes out, everybody's smiling, don't they? Which is uh, it's always a good sign. I mean, I don't know about you lot, but I can't wait for the summer, summer fishing. It's something I always look for forward to so it's nice And we can uh, hopefully put this down in here like that, like so. So that's the rig. I'm going for a pulley rig this time, okay? Lines up like that. As I said, I've put, I'm fishing a, a, a rotten bottom. I haven't got that on the other one, but I'm fishing one on this one. And um, I'm also going to fish a bigger hook on this one so I'm going to go for a slightly bigger bigger hook so I'm going for a 6-0 and then I will put a 5-0 octopus hook up the top of it and away we go and away we go whole squid bait on this now I think try and share, share the sand out a little bit Uh, it's been a nice day to be honest it's been a lot nicer if that sun's going to come out like it is now target species is all we can ask for really isn't it always nice to get that big one out though nice that's in there like that I do okay so what should we do you know what? I'm, I'm actually feeling one of these um, these pilchards will go down well. If I'm honest, that's what I think I'm going to do. But I am going to fish it with squid. Nice. That's what I'm going to do. It's got one of them. I get a nice bit of squid there. Trouble is, it's, it's like doggy. <laughs> it's got doggy written all over it in here which uh, we don't want. So, bait elastic. Bait elastic here. Bait elastic is in there. Nice. So if I pull that hook gear down through the uh, top end of the fish, I've just gone right down for its eyeball there now. I mean, these you say a 6-0 but they're not massive 6-0 hooks these um you put like a manta extra there it's going to be a very similar size so um that's a good thing i feel i mean you don't want massive massive hooks but at the same time you want to hook what's going to do the business don't you i mean they would land blondes easy enough they land small lines in the oh, to be honest they're, they're down spot it spot eats. the gape size on it isn't much different than a 4-0 um, manta extra so I'm just going to scale down the bait size slightly because I'm going for a spotty now. They like fish baits. They really do. I mean, I've had some really good ones on sand deal and stuff, but I've always found that um, the bigger fish tend to go for a nice, nice big fish bait. Okay, so I'll pull that in like so. And then basically what I do is I come right down through the middle, pull that like that. 
and away we go. So what am I going to do on that now? Use Joseph. <laughs> Joseph's jumper. <laughs> uh, a bit cheeky, innit? I'll have to buy him dinner on the way over or something like that, won't I? But I can't fish with mucky hands and do my head in. Right, lovely. Okay, squid and uh, pilchard bait. Joseph's jumper. <laughs> Bless his cotton socks. Let's just get this one out there then, guys, and uh, see what we can get. So I'm using my uh, I'm using my blonde rigs here at the minute, like six foot pulleys, very large pulley rigs, and um, to be honest, depending how rough it is out there today, depends on whether I get it back. I'm open so because it's it's what I like to use for the rays really. <laughs> Bit of side wind coming through. I have to turn the turn the reel down a slightly, but um, we'll see if uh, we'll see if we can get one out of here now then. There you go. Whee! That is out there. And I mean out there. So I wanted. So that's very loose out now on a pulley rig. So it allows the fish to literally take off tips just arching over and uh, hopefully you can see a fish out. Nice to get a ray out as well, wouldn't Unreal. It really is, I can't believe it. There's even rotten bottoms there as well now and um still the slagged up rotten bottoms, there's something out there isn't there? See we're blaming blaming anglers and stuff like that, but it could be a net what washed up in. You don't know. But to me it feels it's definitely something. Strong knot. There he is. This one of these has been out there for a little while now. This one more bomb lead. Think about getting him in and uh, seeing what's what. Absolutely stripped back to the drawing board with this one, I believe. But um, seemed to get the uh, bomb lead straight back out. I think it's just a case of uh, rebaiting and uh, maybe getting one out to the horizon once more time. Three. 
that's all right then got that one back it's always nice but he was stripped so i think i'm gonna go for a sand deal we have got a couple of sand deal left which is ideal so we got work tomorrow so it's uh it's not going to be a uh, a long session tonight right so what i do is bring him in uh I think we'll probably fish till we run out of bait, if I'm honest. That sounds like a good plan. I'll tell you what, fantastic response for the um, specimen award scheme for the first year. Really is, Spin. Um, we've started a shore league up with it, and we've uh, capped the numbers now to um to basically have a bit more fun with it really i didn't want to get the reason we put a charge on it is if we put it for free you get loads of people getting involved in it um for the wrong reasons at the end of the day and uh, we made it so it was pennies to take part in but at the same time it, it, it sort of like gets rid of anybody what's not going to take it seriously because if anybody's willing to part with uh, a few hard-earned bit of cash um they're going to uh they're going to take part in it they? and they and we've got a really good bunch of lads from all over the neck of different neck of the woods really which has been good i mean from all over the uk from scotland wales um isle of Wight, you name it cornwall devon um kent yorkshire there's been pl pl people from everywhere and um there is limited spaces left guys we are capping it and uh making just to have a bit more fun with it really we got i want people in the group we're going to take get take part have a laugh don't like no bullying and stuff like that what goes on and people putting silly remarks and stuff like that at the end of the day every the whole whole thing was been started so for people to have fun with it and uh Maybe next year we up up, up the cap, we won't cap it so much. We might up the numbers or something like that. But for the first year, um, really, I wanted to see just see how it goes, really. And I don't think we could have asked for much more with it because um, we've had a fantastic response, not just by the anglers but by the uh, sponsors and that as well. So um, yeah, it's something I'm very much looking forward to taking part in this year. But uh, there it is. So that there is a double sandhill bait ready to go out. <laughs> Try and get us a spotted ray. Try and get us a spotted, spotted ray. So, let's hopefully. I like longer traces. Okay, for me personally, when I'm fishing for rays, I like a longer trace. I find, I just find it works. And um, yeah, with, as I said before, with this type of rig, You've got to let really let the uh, let the fish take a bait back once hooked, and uh, it starts taking off. Hopefully, you get a screaming reel. But uh, let's let's get this one out then. Joseph's not in front of me now, so I can can uh, afford to let one like fly, fly. Safety at, at this at the same time, really. Uh, if I get my foot, it's a grip in here. Got into that, didn't I just? It's letting that lead go round, guys, before you hit it. And it certainly makes a difference. You can feel the power as you're coming round the rod, like getting right into the midsection and just exploding. It really, really is a serious bit of kit.
So I'm with that rig now, I like to pull it back slightly, just to allow that trace to stay out the way and start drifting around in the tide. And uh, hopefully, I mean, I got a bit of, I'm sure that was a bite on my other rod then. I don't think it was though, because it's quite, quite slack. We said at the beginning start point um for recap from the last video was hall sands out to the left hand side you can see this wind look at this wind and like the sea conditions hopefully you're not picking up it all on the mic because it is rather loud but um hopefully the sound quality is uh, up to scratch let's try to do the best we can i mean the, mic, the external mics underneath my jumper here and uh you're bound to pick up a little bit. I don't think we can help it with these conditions, really. But uh, you've got B sands in the back going around to Slapton, moving all the way down towards Dartmouth. And uh, yeah, sort of like sheltered by the headland, as I said there. You've got the lighthouse up in the background. A lot of rough ground around the front, just the, around the front as you go around. This is sort of like the only sort of like clean area into the bay, sort of here now. And uh, yeah, you've got mats come on the other side, which can produce some good fishing as well. And uh, yeah, this is what we're here for. So, Joseph's bait. What you got on there then, boy? Look at that. What's that sand doing? Pilchard? Yeah. Look at that for a bait, eh? Looks him rather sexy. He's using a um, pair of Fathoms with a pair of Grand Prix. Any fish anywhere Grand Prix? So, uh, he's been using these for the last couple of years now, to be honest. Battered and bruised, but still looking and, and going strong. Quite stiff rods, um, but very user friendly. You can see there now, they're easy enough to use and easy enough to cast. I mean, qu quick over head thump and it's uh, away it goes. I like to keep the um, the bomb lead tight so if it starts slacking off i always give it a little pull back just so i've got bite detection there really been a nice day enjoyed getting out birds are dive bombing the water to the right hand side where we were fishing earlier on hopefully it's sand deal it's um no I need this once a week, <laughs> as long as I can get out. I don't get out as like I used to, I think, because as you get older and that, I can't be out getting out to like one or two o'clock in the morning and getting up for work at six o'clock. So I need me beauty sleep. But um, it's something that I need to do once a week, because if I don't do it, I feel like I get, I don't know, moody is probably the best way. I mean, it's, it's a, I think, like I said before, especially with with the, obviously the worries in the, of the of world and, um, everyday life and stuff like that it's um it can get on top of most people sometimes i mean life's never perfect is it it's always all work it's always you're always working that's the way it feels and um unfortunately sometimes you've got to be able to work and play haven't you so it's like judging it a little bit but to be fair i'd like to get out a couple of times so we can do a video for you guys i really would but um it's it's having the time really i mean um these longer videos are going down really well and um, i've had loads of messages coming through regarding them so um i think i will keep on doing a lot of them like that at the moment i don't think there's no one else doing this, this type of video what's going on for that like like two two hours plus and um, i think sometimes people like that and, it, and it's about being different for me i mean when we first started doing the like, videos and stuff like that there wasn't many people doing it now there's like so many channels and different people like doing their own kind of fishing youtube videos and stuff like that which is good to see um but at the same time it's trying to do something different than anybody else is doing isn't it but no doubt people like switch on and start copying and what you're doing and stuff that's down to life at the end of the day isn't it but um no it's something which to be honest i had the idea of it and for me personally i like to sit down make some rigs and watch a video you know what i mean and um if it if the content's right 
and that's what it's about and i've tried i've tried to make make it a bit more interesting in the videos rather than just going specimen and as you see we're looking at seals and doing a bit of wildlife stuff and like general like where we're fishing and like information on marks and um how we're catching a lot of people know what we're doing and how to catch a fish they're watching it for enjoyment and then there's other guys who are watching it to learn and that's that's the main focus for me is about educating and um just i never had that growing up you know what i mean for me personally it was about um having to learn it all and i found how how hard i actually found it back then i mean um, especially just reading magazines and watching videos and stuff like that and the main thing for me was experience i've got to be honest and it's something i get asked asked all the time i mean that's something you can't buy you can go and buy big decent rods and reels and loads of fancy fishing equipment and stuff like that but unfortunately the knowledge and it's it's just something which you gain over time and um go on right rod's having a little play there's a bomb lead i'd love to see a nice big spot here today and that would make it for us go on go on loosen that a little bit starting to pull over there lovely something playing with that i do love these glass tips guys i really do the bike detection you can see straight away there now and um picking up everything well one of the main things for me growing up was writing everything down and it's something which i wish I, I started to do earlier rather than later because nine times out of ten you sort of like go and fish a sort of area and um, especially when it's new areas and stuff like that you've you've got to take a lot into account and it's not just the tides and it's not just the weather it's the conditions and and watercraft reading the water is a big thing and a lot of the places are like i was starting to fish like in the past like 10 years now especially because when i was like first like getting into like, like ray fishing and stuff a lot of the marks were like more towards plymouth uh, a lot of the rock marks and stuff like that and small eyes is something i used to love it was my favorite fish like for ray wise and you start getting into the blondes and especially when i started hitting the blondes it's, it's i never really had no one to take me it was it was a basically me just going out there and having to find the areas and, and just putting the time in and um i was lucky enough one guy uh, which i knew through um a bit of sponsorship and that he sort of um i asked because we went up and down like loads of places and stuff and he sort of like gave us a place to try and um from that one place to try we sort of like found different marks and that really but um it was an hour it was it was a lot of people and what i found my, myself i was going down and i see the angle a lot of anglers making the same mistake i was going down on big spring tides and thinking that the fish were coming in on those big spring tides and what i found more than anything is the fact that they weren't coming in they were there on those big spring spring tides but they liked the tide and between the between the headlands we're fishing you've got the left point you've got right point on a smaller tide the tide seems to come in and around into the bay which basically creates tide closer in and that's what you need for these blondes you want the tide i mean if your rods just sat there and it's not moving you're not really catching nothing but if you've got your rod tips bent over and you can tell when the time is because your rod tips will start start doing it going a certain way in that and you know you're in with half a chance of catching one and um, the only way you know that and get that is out of experience and fishing it because you you've got to look you've for me watercraft was one of the main ones. i was i was down this area one day and um, there was birds smashing right down into the water left and right and left hand side of me and i thought you know what i'm chucking one in there so i got a bomb lead and put a drop down on cast it out into the into where the birds were hanging and uh within five minutes real screaming off small eyed ray and your birds are going down trying to attack the sand deal wouldn't they and if there's sand deal there the rays are going to be there uh, anywhere where you've got like clean sand and you've got sand eels you've got a good cat chance of catching rays i mean the stero bay where we we're fishing of the place video a few years uh, for a few um, weeks back you um i've had some really good sessions in there really really good sessions in 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 choppy conditions like rough seas but uh, at the same time you've got to, got to have your wits about you down there because i've been on that platform fishing before in big big seas and been fine and i've gone down there in the daytime before and i've got to be honest i wouldn't i, I didn't want to i couldn't didn't want to be there i had to cast from the top and it was just um 
it was dangerous more than anything. I packed up and went because I was fishing on my own as well. And all it took is one swell to move that extra meter and a half height, which is possible, especially when you're fishing those sort of conditions. And um, it's a case of getting washed off into the sea. So it is one of them where rough conditions do have its do have its way of producing better fish on different marks and stuff like that. But at the same time you've got to know the conditions and know the whereabouts to where you're fishing. I mean, a lot of the North Cornwall coastline can be deadly with big swells. A lot of the rocks are, are like, they're like a sheet of glass when they're wet. And um, it's took a lot of people's lives over the years, especially anglers' lives, due to those seas because the swells are absolutely massive. You think you're like 10 metres high, high at one stage and they won't get you. And a roller will come in and it will literally swamp the ledges you're on. So it is, it is very serious, guys. There's a lot, it's, not, it's a lot different than, than going down to a carp lake and fishing, or it's a lot different to going to like a river and fishing. With the sea, you can never take it for granted, because as I said, Nick and Mike um, Coomber went down uh, bass into one of the beaches the other week, and um, the only guys I know would don't go bassing on surf beach in waders. Anyway, they had their wellies on and stuff like that, and uh, Mike managed to get wet first, Nick's laughing at him, so Nick sat on his box a little bit further back doing his bait up and that. Uh, before he had a chance to cast, this wave's come in and just washed him straight off his box. Luckily, they're on, a, like, on the beach and it's not very deep, but it come right in, and if one, especially with that sort of fishing. You need waders on, really, I, I think. Personally, I would be using waders, but um, I think they like getting wet. But uh, they, luckily, both of them were, both of them were all right and stuff. Um, but it can be, it can be, I remember do, I used to do a lot of uh, bass fishing and um, ray fishing up at Sandy Mouth Bay up in, uh, up in North Cornwall and um, they're bued and uh, lovely beach to fish but the tide will be there one minute and then it'll be over the, you know what I mean, you just got to, you just got to watch what you're doing and setting up is exactly the same. A lot of, I see the guys go on Chesil or go on to Slapton and they go and set up the beach buddies on incoming tide and you're thinking, guys, what are you doing, you know what I mean? We had a bit of fun many years ago, a mate of mine turned up with two girls, we were in, down in Slapton and it was an incoming tide and they set up and had a few beers there was, not really taking it seriously, they, I think they were more interested in the girls and having a drink. And uh, my mate said to me, aren't you going to tell them it's an incoming tide? I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're in there like that with the girls. This wave, luckily, it wasn't dangerous. It was like a flat sea, it was just a gradual swell. And it come in, hit the tent, and got them all soaking wet. Right. But uh, yeah, Joseph's getting hammered by crabs. But um, no, it's um, it just goes to show the uh, the general aspects of the sea, really. And it's something you you can't take for granted. It's not fishing very well today. I mean, I know we've had that one fish, but um, I thought we'd see a few more fish out of this. Is it took your hook? crabs okay guys i'm gonna bring these um this fixed lead one in a minute we had a couple bites on it earlier on but um i'm not thinking well the looks of joseph's it's going to be stripped Well, we got the lead back, but the bait's been smashed, and I mean smashed, so back to the drawing board, get baited up and see if we can get another one out, eh? Right, what are we going to go for then, folks? What should we go for? Do you know what? I'm feeling a squid bait coming on again. That's what I'm feeling, a nice squid bait. So I'm gonna put that that back in there. No, I'm not. I'm not feeling a squid bait. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling sandhill bait. So need a trace line. Oh, that just mashed. Absolute mush. 
and get that in and around like that. So, is that a bite? Did I just see a bite? Never. Oh, I could have seen a bite. It's dropped slack again, didn't it? Is that wind, though? Could be, because it's on that bomb ladder, isn't it? Nice. Come down here with crab, get some really good uh, grass sport, especially a bit further out. Freeway swivels, rotten bottom rigs, and uh, yeah, it can be really productive. I've had them over five pounds down there. At the right times of the year as well, you can produce black bream. It's uh, it can be a quite productive area, really. It's uh, it's just putting the time in down here. I mean, those that those that do will see the rewards. I mean, over the years, I've had some nice spotted, I've had some nice small lights, I've had some uh, nice bullets. I've never had a big conger off here, which is surprising, really. With the, I say, I say, it's it's a funny one because it's not that deep. I know it goes out to the point, but. Like you're on the off the front of that, you'd think it'd be deep, and it's not. It's quite reefy, like shallow reef. I don't think there is really a good depth of water there at high water, if I'm honest. But it seems to produce fish in the right conditions. Right, that's that. Let's get another one out then. So for casting, my drop normally, I sort of like put my up. The rear into the like under my arm and then that will be where my lead is slightly drop it a little bit like that right but the main thing here is as you come out with especially with the pendulum as you come out is letting that lead go around okay so if you let the lead go out like that and then come around wait 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 then turn i didn't catch that properly but that there's gone out that's gone over a good, good hundred yards in this condition, which is good because you've got a lot of side wind, okay? But uh, this line's still in the air now. But by just leaving that a couple of seconds to go round, and when you hit it correctly, you can feel it as you come round the rod loading rather than just tip. It's quite important with the T9s, or any rod with a glass tip, really. The GT14s from Zolkron, the um, M4 GT from Ziplex. I mean, anything with a glass tip, you just got to give it time. I don't know if you can pick it up up there now. There you got it, there, look. See these birds? He's just got one in his mouth now. They're literally smashing down on the water. Look at them there now, dive bombing the water. So they're picking something up, but we can't see. All, the, all out there they are. So whether it's garfish or mackerel, sand deal, it's some kind of bait fish there they're after. But uh, they're right in front of us where they are. Where they are. There he goes. Should have bought a float rod. <laughs> It'd been quite fun today as well with this one, wouldn't it? Did it go off like? Doggy. Doggy? Yeah. You reckon? Has it gone off the... It's on top. It's a pillar, or a doggy? Doggy, innit? Oh, yeah, it's dogfish coming through. This has a few fish here. It's a good start over the top of the tide. You can see the island mark's covered now. And, uh, yeah. 
breeze. There he is. So there it is, dogfish. It's uh, when you first start fishing, guys, you're going to pick up a load of these, and it's just nice to put a bend in the rod when you get get going. But after time, they do become a nuisance because they end up picking up your baits rather than the rays and stuff. But we always try to um, try and get them back safe as, as we can. And um, to be honest, it's a good one to, like sometimes, especially when you're doing league matches and stuff like that, it's nice to get a weigher and it's quite an easy one to get a weigher sometimes, like a two at two eight half a tons of specimen fish. So um, yeah, he's gonna get in return now. Okay, folks. So this is the bomb lead now. Open on the retrieve, we're gonna get a, a macro or something. I've had it before. Slowing down slightly now. Suddenly you hear a smash. I've had it with Pollock as well, certain ray marks, rough conditions. Level one look. Completely bare hooks. Completely bare hooks. So I'm gonna put a grip lead on this one now and uh, hopefully we can try and get another fish out. Pilchard. Nice little bait. I'm gonna go slightly scaled down on bait sizes here now. Okay. I just want to get a fish out now. Been a nice day. It's just nice to get out sometimes, isn't it? So. That scent. Uh, that scent, Whee, lovely. All right, I'm gonna go right up to the top a minute, just to hold it into place. And then the octopus hook. See, so octopus hook at the top of it's just offset slightly, and it does make a difference when you when you put it down through the line. Some people like to put a big bit of shrink tube there. I don't normally put the shrink tube on myself, but I know there's people that what like to. So I'll put that at the top of the bait now, pull him back in, and I'll just get my bait elastic again and uh, bring him down. That's got bullets written all over it, I know it has. Nice spotty. It's also got spider crab. <laughs> Now's the time we get all the spiders down here, guys, and they can be an absolute nightmare. They really can, especially when you're going after the blondes and the small lights and the spotties early because um, they'll hammer your sand deal, and I mean literally demolish it. And uh, the worst thing about it is you're sitting there waiting and your, your sand deal's already been smashed. Either that or that you're bringing them in, and especially to get quality sand deal now, it can be quite frustrating. I'm lucky enough to have a contact what gets a few. And uh, yeah, cer certain times it, it's the only bait that I'll take out. I won't take ever, any other bait out with me. It's just because I know that's all I need, you know what I mean? And it's in it handy to have a flask and put them in a flask and stuff. And um, that way I can go down, go fishing. If I can afford to take three or four packs with me, maybe five packs in the, set, in the flask. And I know if I'm not going to use anything, it's not going to waste. And I can obviously put it back in the flask and I'll put it in the bag and, and it will save to another day. That wind's picked right up now. But um, what time have we got here? Let's have a look, shall we? 
let's see what time it is. High water six o'clock, so it's now 20 to four. Oh, was that a bite? Or well, the wind, that was probably the wind. It's not a bite. Right, let's get this one out. Okay, big side wind coming now. So I've turned my reel down slightly. And uh, I want to punch this, really. I don't know what way to go. Tide's incoming, so I need to go right slightly and then pull him back in, I think. Joseph in with an, uh, another one. What will he have this time then, Joseph? Dogfish? Another dogfish? I actually had a bite a minute ago, so I'm going to bring mine in now. Is it uh, it's doggy in it? Rotten bottoms are working, which is always nice. Lovely. Okay, so. I've had a bite here, which seems to have, either that rod's gone over one or the other. Do us a favour, can you move that camera a minute? That wind's quite strong now. I'm just hoping the sound's quite good for you guys if, uh, watching the footage, really. Sometimes, like, this sort of wind and that can uh, make a difference between making it watchable or not, I think. Last thing you want to be listening to is an hour and a half of like, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, when you're fishing in 40 mile an hour winds, it's uh, it's rather challenging. Look at Sammy down there, Joe. I think we're going to give it over the top of the tide, but in my honest opinion, I'm not holding it much hopes. I mean, I think, I think if we were going to see something, we'd have seen something by now. But it's fishing, you never know, do you? Having said that, these are being nightmares today. There you go. So, hooks have been annihilated. Completely annihilated. So, I'm going to bait everyone up now. And uh, I think it's probably last cast. Don't you reckon, Joe? Yeah, unless the waves start coming in. Okay. I'm not mucking around here. Double sand deal bait for last cast. Um, it's not been as productive as I, I would have liked, but uh, I do apologise. Joseph's on the phone in the background. But uh, get all this out the way, and then what I'll do. Fish a double sand deal bait for last cast of the day. Oh, I'm Unfortunately, the other week, Joseph had his motorbike stolen <laughs> and uh, he just had the police phone him. Someone's tried yeah. to register the bike, so uh, which is a nightmare for him, but at least whoever was stupid enough to steal it is going to get some repercussions because uh, they tried, <laughs> I don't know why, to uh, basically um, register the bike in their own name. 
unless someone sold it to someone and um, nine times out of ten that's probably going to be the case but uh, not good some right horrible people out there in this world in there you know what I mean people spend enough of their hard-earned money to go and get some good things and there's just people willing to just to go and take things it's uh, it's not not right at the end of the day it's a bit like me putting lovely fresh sando into the sea and getting smothered by crabs <laughs> but, uh, hopefully they get you ever done it and uh, Joseph gets some uh, justice from the whole situation because it can be rather stressful isn't that right Joseph it's not fun trying to get to work with uh, no mode of transport There you go. My last bait of the day that I might put another one on the other one. But uh, if we don't, it's a case of getting up back up the hill and uh, having another session, isn't it? Okay then. So, I'm going to wind one up now. Like proper, try and get them out there just to get a bit more distance. And then uh, hopefully... It's, it's nice. It's, now's the time really. I mean, it's coming up to high water which is what you want so nice long flowing rig and hopefully we get a bit of uh, untangledness out of it like so double sandal bait who can say no let's get one out there then i'm going to try and lever this nice <laughs> I love it. I really do. I mean, as I said before, guys, at first I wasn't really a fan. But uh, just after playing around with it, my, my suggest suggestion to anybody that has got one who's not getting on with it is to take him down to a field or get down to a beach and just have a little play. Slow, your, slow everything right down. And uh, I assure you, once you start getting into the midsection of the rod, you'll love them. Keep it going. Keep that tension, drop, drop that line too much, mate. You'll take him right into snag, you just let it, didn't you? Yes, I seen you. Nightmare. You did, no, you did. I seen it do it. As you're coming down, you need to make sure you've got that tension there. I don't think, I think it was trapped. No, but it was, I can see you drop it. When, when you get your lead rod down like that, you see loads of people do it. It's that, that was a fish on there then, wasn't it? I think it was a crab. Was it? Yeah, I didn't have a bite on it. It was just dead weight. My it mind could have been a bullet, so. Yeah, I would have had a head shake, wouldn't I? It was nothing. It was like it was dragging across the bottom. important sometimes when you when you're like especially fishing like this i see a lot of anglers do it is when you dr go to drop down the trouble is a, a guy who i used to fish with years ago said it's a meme when i was like first starting to fish up the bristol channel and stuff and you let your rod go straight down what you need to do is r literally wind down with the rod instead of dropping it i know you want to get leverage up but at the same time when you're going like that there then you imagine you're going all the way up like that and you're going back down. That line's just dropping straight down into the rough. And then you're picking some the, the length of your rod straight down to the sea, which is probably about 20... I would, how, long, how far from the tip of your rod to the sea would you say that is now? 30 foot? Yeah, good. About 30 foot. So you're giving that, you're giving that fish 30 foot of line straight away. What you, what any, when you're like that, what you need to do is bring it up like that with the real rod and then come back down and wind into it and then come back up and then bring it back down and then pull back up. It's worth pulling and not reeling to get the fish going upwards, but at the same time, as you're coming back down, make sure that rod tip's going down. I'm hoping Joseph can get, rid of, get this one back now. Go on, Joe, get him up. He's gone right into that rock, mate, isn't he? Nightmare. He was coming as well. I think it was dead weight being lifted off the bottom. 
never mind. Does it feel like a crab, did it? Yeah, I, did. I just picked it up and it was like dragging across the bottom. Yeah, nightmare, mate. Big wind up again for Joseph. He managed to get his rig back. It was, uh, he went far right. And uh, it was a massive bit of drift with. Look at that, look. Straight out into that tide. Boom, that's where you want it, that's where you want it. But yeah, he walked far right and uh, managed to get it, come back in. Joseph, what was that? Uh, was it? Yeah. What, underwater? Yeah, it keeps going under a pop -up. That looked like a pollock. That was Was it? Wait, oh yeah, it is, look, he's over there. It was a shiny white and black what done it. But, um, no, last cast now, guys. So, uh, literally going to start packing down now. Conditions-wise, it's not as, not as coloured as I'd like it, really. I'd like to have seen it a little more coloured. Having said that, as high water started to come now, it sort of, like, cleared up slightly, which, um, to be honest, I didn't think it would, would be like that. I thought it would be a lot more, the, the weather has been like 40 mile an hour southwesterlies and it's, uh, it tends to colour the water up a lot. And the good easterly is what you want as well down here after a good easterly blow. I mean, it, it sort of like brings everything in and um, you can have some really good fishing down here, but it's not, it's not paid off for us today. But at the same time, the revenge is, uh, is it, it. We've, uh, we've had a fish out. We've both had a fish out today. So yeah, target species. And uh, yeah, just going to bring both rods in now and we'll get packed up. But I hope everybody enjoyed the weekend. And here's to another good weeks. Hopefully, better weather. So, going to bring the, uh, the other rod in first. See how it goes. Pleasant day. Nothing on here. I'm going to slow down a minute. What rod rig is this? Oh, this is the uh, running up and over. So I have got a chance of uh, luring something in if my bait's still on it, but I don't think it is. Never unclipped. I was clipped up. Been smashed again. Just gonna put that one back in the rig wallet now and we'll get the second one in. Time to uh, pack down. There's not every session could go to plan, but at the end of the day, we've managed to get out for the day. We've had target species. I thought we'd have a few more than that, really. I think if we'd stayed over that side, we could have possibly, but as I said, the water coloration is cleared up slightly, but um, managed to bring some leads back as well. That's a first for down here for a long time, isn't it? But um, my honest opinion, either a net or something's coming out there, especially on that right-hand side there now. So it's either down to anglers snagging up or there is some kind of net coming through. But you don't, you can't feel, normally with like a net or something, you could pit, feel yourself pull into it, you're just snagging straight away out there now, which is uh, it's just crazy, really. But um, let's have a look here. Try and get everything in properly. So think of the rig wallet. The good thing about that now, what, what I've got is I'm going to keep those hooks on that. So I know that's on the pulley, that's on the running up and over, isn't it? So I can put that in with my front and I know I've got to change the trace on them then because that's uh, the rig body bodies are normally nine times out of ten all right. But I know the hooks are there. So when I get home, 
I basically cut those hooks off and I put them underneath this, the um, cold water and let them dry off and then they'll be fine. Sharp, quick sharpen up, I can use them for another trip. I mean, the uh, the bottom one is um, is solid anyway, but uh, that's what I tend to do because the last thing you want to do is to keep on running through hooks like that. I mean, quick sharpen up with a sharpening stone and uh, you've got a new hook there. So I'm just going to look after my eyes. I've nearly done it. So what I'm going to do is... Pull these down, like so. You spend a lot of money on rods, you want to try and look after them really. The days are gone of me uh, chucking them in just a rod over door. I know it's a little bit of extra weight when you're traveling to places, but at the same time you're looking after them then, aren't you? So that reel there is it's the one I've got, a, I think that's the one I've um, got to reline. So I'll just take everything off. I'll, I'll leave the ratchet off there then. And then I'll take that home and then I'll put them under the cold water again and leave them to dry off. Get the real bags out, the rod bags out. Do like your harder cases from Century. So that's the first one. Pack down. You should, when you get home, take them out and wash all the eyes off under cold water. Do anybody ever do it? I oh, know I don't. <laughs> you should do, really. Okay, so that goes in. The rod bag. Reels in the reel bag. And cover that over and put this next one in, save them scratching up. Uh, GoPro bits are there. Rig wise bits, I can put all that together. Shock leader. Got my rubbish there as well. So my rubbish, I've got a pack of crisp deal, I've got my sandwich rubbish and stuff like that from earlier on in the bag. Uh, leave my scissors out for the minute, as I said. We'll get rid of this, the bait in a minute. Um, once I've got rid of all my gear, I'll, I'll show you what we normally do with the bait. But half the time we chuck the bait back in the sea and just take the wrappers back. I mean, fish and birds and stuff will eat all the bait up and there's nothing wrong with chucking that back in the sea. Uh, but the, the plastics and everything else, straight back in the bag, take back home and uh, put in the bin. So I am quite slack on that, but I reckon this would be et straight away. Gonna leave him there a minute because he's not long gone out that one. Okay guys, so I'm gonna reel this one here in now. Bit of weight on that. <coughs> Tip's going over anyway. What I was talking about before is how you when you're reeling, you need to reel down with it, right, and then lift. Exactly the same again. Not giving no tension down because if you have got a good fish, especially like pollock and stuff, because they'll dive. But you just keep the fish up out the way into that, uh, into that, out that danger zone, basically. <laughs> Reeling in, tension at all times with the fish, you know what I mean? And the rig. Here we have the last fish of the session. Don't really want to be doing that with a glass tip. But 
here it is the one and only dogfish guys so uh not exactly what we wanted for the same time so i'm going to show you something now i'm going to, going to de-hook this but i'll just unclip him first so don't put no strain on my uh, rod you've got a, a deep hook fish here what do you do do you risk putting your hands inside it getting bit no you don't what you use is a disgorger so this is this is made by gemini okay and uh you pretty much pick them up anywhere okay but the good thing about this now especially with jeans on i can put the fish in between right and i can get the hooks out the way using this so it stops from hurting the fish but at the same time then i can get that around right and get on the side and i can literally pull that hook out okay no damage at all to the fish and i'm getting back to fight another day they're all fish and uh they all deserve to be treated and try to put back as best as you can now it's quite slippy so i'm not going to go down there i'm just going to shoot them off like that there we go see him he went swimming back down to the depths and uh that's our session at start point guys you know, joseph just bringing in now anything on joe no but uh to be fair for the forecast we, i think we've done all right i mean it's high water now and um it could start to fish on the back tide to be honest the coloration of water like i said it's not what i wanted it to be really you want it chocolate but uh no let's get this packed down now and head on back up the hill exactly the same again basically boring old part of the video for you but um no it's uh it's one of the longer productions we've been having some really good feedback with them and uh i know i uh i've been been told by the guy what done the analysis on the channel that i've got to sit there and talk nonsense because <laughs> people like to watch it so uh that's what i've been doing more than anything and one thing I've, I've found especially like sort of like studying more than anything on youtube and stuff most of the time the big viewing and stuff like that it's just people want entertainment and uh they want to see different things and stuff like that and i've always sort of start sort of like tried to try to aim it around specimen fishing because that's what my, my true passion is you know what i mean but i've been told that i need to include more just normal fishing and um it's what more people want to see rather than going out catching big rays and stuff like that and it surprises me because like i said before we do it like a whiting video or sort of like dogfish video like the other day and it'll get like ridiculous hits where you do a fish video on um catching double figured small eyed ray and you get a couple of thousand hits and it just puzzles me i mean if you haven't watched it guys seriously get on the channel go down through the older listings and that and you'll see like um the one video there what was done just before christmas it's called um ray ray hunt and there's two videos there there's one there's one part video with us and it, we, we had like god it was just like a ray of cast it was phenomenal and then there was a second session which i had double figure fish uh, double figure small line and gav had a, also had a double figured bullet outstanding trip and uh it shows the magic sort of side of the fishing really and uh it's definitely worth check going down through. I know a lot of people will watch this video for the first time after seeing the, the start point, but have a look down through the channel, guys. There's, there really is some really good videos down there. There's also, for anybody who wants to learn to cast, there's one done there from the Hitting the Horizon, which is um, basically learning how to pendulum cast and off the ground cast and stuff, what we've gone through the basics for. I think it's had nearly 200,000 views. Um, so it's at the end of the day, for a lot of the videos we do, we try to, try to do is tutorial. But um, at the same time now, what we're trying to do is, is cater for everybody, really. I mean, like today, we've come down, we've seen a lot of, we've seen a lot of the wildlife around the, around start point with the seals we've done a bit of fishing we've looked after the fish we've handled the fish with care we've picked up our litter we've we've like sort of like on our way home now have a bit a bit of bite to eat and get this all sort of uploaded ready for you to, guys to view but there's a lot of hard work what goes into involved in it and uh for anybody watching the first channel of uh, these productions for the first time please 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 hit that subscribe button now but as we're, we're walking up through and you're listening to we're watching the music the subscribe button's there just put a thumbs up like the video and it helps 
su support what we're doing at the end of the day, guys. And uh, a lot of the, you guys are watching the videos for the first time, and the engagement for people watching the videos or aren't subscribed is like 80%, and it's, it's unreal, really. So please, please, please hit that subscribe button, and uh, we will see you in another adventure. Tight lines, guys.